Healthy Greenwald was celebrating her 20th birthday with a lavish rooftop bash at the Pink Star Hotel. The atmosphere, however, was far from jovial. On the contrary, there was a dark undercurrent of tension in the air. Madison, how can you treat me like this? I'm your younger sister. Kelsey wailed with a wronged expression as she tried to hold back her tears. The effort to maintain her composure only served to make her look more stubborn. We've never been close, she said. I know you don't like me, and I try to keep out of your hair, but it doesn't mean that I don't love you. After all, we are family. Opposite Kelsey stood a lovely young woman who looked unnaturally pale despite the hint of makeup she wore. Her hands, clenched into fists, dangled by her sides and shook uncontrollably. Kelsey staggered forward and grabbed Madison by the arm. She had stopped trembling, but she was unable to prevent the tears from overflowing and started running down her cheeks. To the people gathered around, she looked both pitiful and lovable. Several guests had formed a semicircle to watch the confrontation between the two, and a low murmur rippled through the crowd. Kelsey's voice rose as she continued imploring, Madison, you know that I try to keep a low profile at home. I don't hog the attention of our parents or our brothers. I'll give you anything you want, but can you give me something too? As she spoke, the tears flowed freely. Her body, which was slightly thinner than Madison's, began to tremble again. She gripped her sister's arm forcefully enough to leave a bruise. Madison, let me keep my boyfriend, please, Kelsey begged. The background babbling grew in intensity as guests purposefully raised their voice loud enough for Madison to hear. They intended to let her know precisely what they thought of her. Isn't that woman a little too much? She's her sister's boyfriend. Has she no sense of right and wrong, one of them said. Yeah, I heard Kelsey was about to get engaged, a woman beside her replied. And who then suddenly goes and does this to her? Can you believe it? She thinks she can get away with it just because she's the eldest? I've heard people say bad things about her, someone else interjected. She's got a shameless streak. Man, whatever wants her? Yet yeah, she's the teacher's fiancé. She really is brazen. The comments did indeed sting Madison's ears. The arm Kelsey was grasping was beginning to throb. She could feel her sister's nails digging into her skin. But it all faded into a distant blur as her eyes landed blankly on Luke Morris, who stood off to the side without uttering a word. Luke, her boyfriend, whom she had been with for four years. The man who had said two days ago that he needed to rush home to visit his seriously ill sister, but who now appeared at the Greenwald's party as Kelsey's fiancé. Madison paid no attention to Kelsey. She yanked her arm away and approached Luke with hesitant steps. Raising her eyes at him, and with a slightly trembling voice, she said softly, Luke, I only want to ask you one thing. Whose boyfriend are you? The moment she finished speaking, the entire venue erupted into mocking laughter. Her stepmother, Stella Greenwald, rushed up to her. She raised her palm and loudly slapped her across the face. Madison felt the sharp sting of the slap and suddenly had the urge to cry. Her body shook violently and her hair fell in front of her face, half covering it. Madison, be careful. Stop humiliating our family. Don't you think our reputation is bad enough? Stella yelled. Madison was taken aback by the slap. But even so, she still stubbornly wanted to hear Luke's answer. With a trace of anticipation in her eyes, she asked again, Tell me, whose boyfriend are you then? Madison, you're the eldest. You should regain your composure, Stella said. I know you don't like me, but this is your younger sister's birthday party. Today is also Luke's first appearance. Do you really have to embarrass everyone like this? Stella was also trembling, as if she had been deeply hit by her stepdaughter's words. Madison, 
If there's anything you need to say, she added, we'll talk about it when we get home. Stop hurting your sister's feelings. When Kelsey saw her mother appear, she immediately ran to her side and put her hand on her shoulder. She started pleading, Mom, don't be like this. Madison was just confused. To Madison, the activity around was little more than static. Her mother and sister faded into the background as she zeroed in on Luke. She had never been so stubborn before. Looking him straight in the eye, she said firmly, Luke, answer me. Are you my boyfriend or Kelsey's boyfriend? The people around them frowned and the mutterings continued. The Greenwalds were one of the city's most prominent families, on par with the Westons, who were not only powerful, but honest and highly respected. Madison was a stain on her family's name, and they despised her for it. The chorus of comments continued. What's wrong with Madison? I remember that she was never very good at standing up for herself. Why is she behaving so willfully today? Who knows? The Greenwalds are so dysfunctional. I really couldn't care less about them. Following Madison's question, all eyes turned to Luke. The man at the center of it all, who had been standing there silently watching everything unfold in front of him, and who looked so funny and handsome, became the focus of the attention for the first time. I... Luke started. He didn't dare meet Madison's gaze and seemed to find himself in a difficult position. Before he could say anything, Kelsey interrupted him. As if taking Madison's side, she unexpectedly said, Luke, you can choose my sister. I'm fine with it. In that instant, the surrounding guests became even more disgusted with Madison's actions. Luke turned to Kelsey and put his arm around her shoulder. Softly, but firmly, he said, Kelsey, I'm not going to hurt you for your sister's sake. I'm your fiancé, am I not? Madison looked at the two of them and their self-satisfied smiles and felt a catch in her throat. Her vision went blurry. Before she could regain her senses, she was led away. Completely distracted, she didn't even notice the man in his forties who had grabbed her by the shoulders and was leading her into the lounge the Greenwalls had rented in the hotel. When she departed, the guests on the rooftop let out a collective sigh. I knew that Madison wasn't a good woman. Look, she's already got lovers coming for her. I think that man's the manager of the Wainer group. I heard the Greenwald and the Wainer are involved in some projects together and have been quite close recently. So do you think Madison is someone who might be willing to sacrifice herself for her family? Indeed, she really is something. The onlookers discussing Madison concerned in the slightest about embarrassing Greenwald with their comments. In fact, Stella occasionally joined in. Busy as they were, immersed in their gossip, no one noticed Kelsey follow Luke to where Madison had gone. At the door to the lounge, Madison regained her senses and broke free from the man's grasp. She looked at him warily. Mr. Wanner, don't worry about me. You should go back to the party, Madison spoke. She decided to stay in the lounge for a while to rest. What she didn't expect was for Drake, who had been turning up at her house quite a lot recently, to break into a wide smile after she spoke. The fat on his somewhat plump body seemed to jiggle a bit, which made her feel a little disgusted. Drake raised his eyes to look at the woman in front of him. Madison's definitely the most remarkable member of the Greenwald family, he thought, and the most charming. She's the most attractive one. Madison, please don't call me Mr. Wanner. I'm not that much older than you. Just call me Drake, he insisted. He looked at his prey with satisfaction and tried to lock Madison in his arms again. His only intention at that moment was to enter the lounge with her. Let's go in and rest for a while, he advised. Madison dodged Drake's arm. She was suddenly feeling a little scared. She glanced up the corridor behind him, hoping that someone could appear to stop him from doing something foolish. Drake, please watch your reputation, Madison responded, clenching her fist. 
She tried to avoid him, but no matter what, he managed to pull her into his arms. In desperation, she lowered her head and bit down on his wrist, forcing him to let go. She immediately took the opportunity to turn around and run away. Madison was afraid that Drake would catch up with her. She turned her head to see if he was following her, and accidentally bumped into someone who had suddenly appeared in front of her. Her nose detected a familiar scent. Then she heard Luke's equally familiar voice. The sensation of his palm on her back made her feel at ease. Madison, what's wrong? he asked. Did someone hurt you? He asked. Raising her eyes, she looked at the man standing in front of her. He just refused to admit to our relationship. So what's he up to now? She wondered. Why does he still care about me? Why does he have to act so familiar with me? She mumbled in her head. Madison didn't say anything, and she gave him a stubborn look. Luke knew this was really a sign that she was feeling sad and wanted to get an answer from him. The two of them had been together for four years, and he knew all her expressions well. Madison, why didn't you tell me that you were one of the Greenwalds? Do you know that my parents insisted I marry into that family? I had no choice but to find Kelsey. If I had known that you were their eldest daughter, I definitely wouldn't be with Kelsey now, he exclaimed. Luke's tone rose slightly but he still managed to keep his voice down. Anger flashed through his eyes. Madison, you've gone over the top with your willfulness this time, he added. At his comment, Madison suddenly smiled. Her lips formed a perfect curve, revealing teeth as lovely as natural pearls. Two small dimples enlivened her cheeks. In that instant, for Luke, it was as if spring had arrived. He was done. This was an aspect of Madison he was familiar with, but it was now also unfamiliar to him. At that moment, he felt as if something of great value had slipped through his fingertips. Madison saw Kelsey approach and firmly asked him, Now that you know I'm a member of the Greenwald family, do you want to cancel your engagement to my sister and get engaged to me instead? She questioned Luke with a smirk. Kelsey raised her hand. The slap she delivered was even more ruthless than Stella's and left a bloody taste in Madison's mouth. But Madison still stubbornly looked up and asked Luke again, What do you say? Do you want to break up with my sister and come back to me? Kelsey's sudden appearance had startled Luke. He subconsciously let go of the hand that was holding Madison's shoulder and turned his head to look at her awkwardly. Kelsey suppressed her dissatisfaction and reached out to hold his arm. She looked at her sister warily and said, Madison, do you really have to fight with me over the same fiancé? If what you really want is to get married, can I ask my mother to help you find a suitable prospect? Please, don't separate Luke and me. Luke lowered his head and saw Kelsey's compromising look. Her body which was tightly pressed against his, was shivering. His heart ached. He reached out and held her tightly in his arms. Madison, however, widened her eyes and looked around her. Today the veils are being removed from my eyes, she thought. I see I must be hurt before I can continue to live. Even if their intimate interaction was like a knife cutting her heart, she didn't care. Kelsey, don't cry. Luke reached out a hand and wiped away her tears. Madison is not that kind of person. She will... I will not understand, Madison said, interrupting him and looking coldly at the two people in front of her. Then she continued in a softer tone. I can't understand any of this. I've been in love with you for four years. We've been together since my first year at college. We're about to graduate. I thought we'd get engaged straight away. I thought we'd be getting married. But now you're telling me that you're getting engaged to marry not me, but my sister? I'm sorry, I don't understand, she exclaimed, her voice quivering. Luke looked at Madison in surprise, and Kelsey also looked at her with a confused expression. Luke, for the past four years, I've never once betrayed you. 
Madison continued. But now you treat me like this? Why should I understand you? Why should I bless your plans? She concluded. Madison held her hands tightly closed as she spoke to prevent them from shaking. She tried her best to remain calm. She didn't even dare blink for fear that the tears would start rolling down her face if she did. She looked at him defiantly. So, if you want to get married, you don't have to tell me about it. You don't need to invite me to the wedding because I won't go. It's all just been a misunderstanding. With that, she brushed past them and resolutely walked away. No one knew that after she passed by Luke's side, her eyes were brimming with tears. Madison couldn't even see the direction she was going down the hall. When she finally came to a halt, she aimlessly reached out and turned the nearest door handle. The door opened, and she stepped inside. She closed the door behind her, squatted on the ground with her back against it, and let it all out. At this moment, all she really needed was privacy to vent her emotions and stop herself from going crazy. Madison had never thought that her life would one day turn out like this. She had grown up without the support of a mother. Then one day, her father turned up with a new wife. The family grew to include an older brother, a younger brother, and a younger sister. Overnight, Madison became an outsider in the family. And now, any remnants of love that remained in her life had collapsed because of Luke. Tears poured down onto her arms as she held her face in her hands, and from there, they formed a perfect arc as they splashed onto the carpet, where they disappeared into the dark gray pile. It was as if all of the obstacles in her life would equally be swallowed up on one day. Who are you? Suddenly, a deep voice sounded from within the room. Madison was shocked and looked up blankly at the man standing in front of her. She was still in a daze, and it took her a while to return to her senses. The Pink Star Hotel usually kept empty rooms unlocked. It was because she knew this that she had dared to enter one. However, here was a spooky-looking man in front of her, who was only wearing a towel to cover his lower body. She immediately got up to run out, but because she stood up too quickly, she got lightheaded and staggered forward. She reached out her hand to find something to grab onto and... Unluckily, what she happened to grab was the towel around the man's waist. Madison had yet to recover from her shock when the towel was suddenly wrapped loosely around her head. With the light and her vision mostly blocked, she was scared silly and didn't dare make any movements. Because of the strange position she had ended up in, she had fallen to the floor. From the space her nose opened up at the bottom of the towel, she could just make out the long, straight legs standing in front of her. The legs were rooted to the spot. Despite her nerves and embarrassment, Madison couldn't get up. Finally, she saw the man's feet move, and then she could hear the rustling of clothes being put on. Eventually, he pushed the towel up from her head, but she kept her head down out of shame. The man glared at the woman on the floor and was obviously unhappy with the situation. He opened his mouth, but before he could say anything, the phone in Madison's bag started ringing. It was a strange sound under the circumstances. Madison immediately picked it up. Because she had just been crying, her voice was still a little shaky. Mom, what's the matter? The last thing she wanted at that moment was to get embroiled in a conversation with her stepmother, and she badly wanted to cut her off. But Stella was hardly the kind of person to understand someone else's feelings. You come back here immediately and explain yourself to Drake, Stella shouted. If you spoil our family's business prospects, even your favorite brother won't be able to protect you. Madison's face turned cold, and her fingers tightened on the corner of the towel which she was still holding on to with her left hand. She was no fool, and she understood what Stella meant, even if she wasn't spelling it out. But she replied without hesitation, Mom, that's a business problem. It's not something I need to worry about. Dad and Alex will take care of it. 
I'm not feeling very well now, so I intend to go back to college right away, Madison responded. She hung up the phone without waiting for Stella to reply. It hadn't even crossed her mind up until that moment that the man now squatting in front of her could hear her conversation. He stood up straight. Madison looked at him as she softly apologized. Sorry, sir. I didn't know that there was anyone in this room, or I wouldn't have barged in like that, she expressed. Ian Weston finally had the chance to see her face. If this was the woman his grandmother had arranged for him, he would definitely vent his anger when he returned home. He had already told her he had a girlfriend, and he could not understand why his grandmother still wanted to play matchmaker. You better forget everything that happened today. Ian said to Madison. You're not my responsibility, he added. He handed her a handkerchief. Wipe your tears. I usually don't make excuses for people just because they're women. Next time, you'd better be careful what room you go in. I won't be so understanding, Ian stated. Madison's brain seemed to have short-circuited. She took the handkerchief and finally understood what his problem was with her. What? Did you misunderstand what happened? I really didn't do this on purpose. I told you I came into this room by mistake, Madison explained. She looked apologetically at the slim and well-proportioned man in front of her. He had put on a white shirt, leaving two or three buttons undone, and a pair of khaki-colored pants. After listening to Madison's words, he raised his hand to pick up a glass of water that was sitting on a nearby table and took a long drink. He then cast a sidelong glance at her. In a slow, deep voice, he spoke, Next time, don't randomly take a man's towel. When he had seen Madison's beautiful face a moment before, his mood had instantly improved. Now, he smiled. He turned his head away, again to have another drink, and when he looked back at her, it was to see her rushing out of the room. Her ears had turned bright red. As she planned on returning to college straight away, Madison went home to collect some of her things. She didn't expect the storm that was waiting for her behind the door. She stepped into the house and found that her parents and sister were already there. While she had taken the bus, they had a private car come to pick them up. With everything that had happened during the party that day, they ended up having to cancel it. It was hardly surprising that they had arrived before her. Madison, you're finally here, Stella said sharply. Where have you been? What man were you with this time? She asked. Madison frowned but bit her tongue. She lowered her head and bent down to change into a more comfortable pair of shoes. Stella continued. Let me tell you, Madison. Don't you dare ruin the reputation of our family just because you have nothing better to do. You are shameless. But our family needs to maintain its dignity. Your brother, Zack, is a fine young man and will be respected wherever he goes. But if you continue to muddle along like this, don't blame us for turning against you. Madison stepped into the living room and took a look at the family gathered there. Her older brother, Zack, was on a trip and her younger brother was out. So it was only her parents and Kelsey. She had no intention of wasting her time with them. Dad, Mom, I came back to get some things, and I'll be setting off for college soon, Madison announced. Kelsey walked up to her with a smile on her face. Madison, by now on high alert, took one look at her and knew that she was going to be made to suffer. Her many years of family life experience told her that Stella and Kelsey had something up their sleeve. Madison, don't look so worried. I know you're unhappy right now, but Mom is concerned about you, Kelsey asserted. She reached out to grab Madison's arm and kept pressing the spot where she had dug her nails at the party earlier that day. She was hurting her, but Madison didn't let it show. Mom and Dad have been discussing something and want to surprise you, Kelsey smiled innocently. Ever since she was a child, she had mastered the art of putting on an angelic front, sweet obedient, and sensible. But Madison knew very well what kind of person Kelsey was under that delicate facade. She was a schemer. However, there was no way she could get back at her. After all, 
Her parents doted on her younger half-sister. Kelsey excitedly pulled Madison towards Stella and John. Dad, you should announce the good news. I believe that Madison will be very happy. John Greenwald stared at his daughter. She doesn't look like anyone else in the family, he thought. Probably because she resembles her mother. There were no pictures of her mother anywhere in the house. Although John was her biological father, everyone knew that he didn't really like her. So he felt no compassion when he declared, Madison, your mother and I have had a serious talk about you. We've decided that, in a few days, you'll get married to Drake Lanner. Kelsey will get married on the same day. For the second time in just a few hours, Madison felt as if her brain was about to explode. Except that this time, the explosion would be an even bigger one. Dad, do you know what you're saying? She looked at her father in disbelief. She had always thought that even if he didn't like her, he would never meddle in her personal life. You want me to marry Mr. Wanner? Madison blurted out. What? Aren't you pleased? Stella said sarcastically. Drake is considered a very talented young man. He's only in his forties, which is hardly old. Her lips curved into a proud smile. With your reputation, you still expect to find someone like Luke? You really don't know the ways of the world, she added with an evil lopsided grin. I'm not getting married, and there's no way I'll get married to Drake, Madison retorted. She ignored Stella and looked straight at John. Dad, if Drake were just a little older, he could be my father. Do you really want me to marry a man like him? Just to let Kelsey get married without any snacks? Just so that the Greenwalds can get some small favors in return? Do you realize this is no different from selling your daughter off? At Madison's outburst, John stood up from the couch. He glared at his daughter. Any remnant of guilt left in his heart vanished. Madison, let me make this clear. You will get married to him, he shouted. It's never been your place to make decisions that affect the family. Madison's face turned deathly pale and the room fell silent. After he had finished speaking, John stood there and waited for his headstrong daughter to say something. I can't believe that. As her father, I can't erase the stubbornness in her bones, he thought. Seeing his glare at her, Madison finally understood what it meant to bring disaster upon oneself. Today, I lost the man I've loved for four years, she thought. I knew I'd get no sympathy from my parents. They just pushed me away. Am I really that annoying? Stella walked over to John and gently stroked his back. John, she said, you know that Madison will end up listening to you. Why are you still so angry? Our family isn't compromised of idle people. Kelsey, for instance, will have to sacrifice her happiness to marry into the Moore's family. As the elder sister, how could Madison not understand our good intentions? She is a green malt, after all. When Kelsey heard this, she went up to Madison and carefully said, Drake is actually quite a catch. I heard that he's the one in charge of the family business now. When you marry him, you'll be well off. You can just sit back and enjoy life. Madison snorted loudly. She turned to Kelsey and said, then how about you marry him then? Since he is such a cat, you can have him yourself. Kelsey blanched and looked at Madison with deep hatred in her eyes. Madison, what are you saying? I'm only thinking of what's best for you. You're about to graduate from college and you don't have a boyfriend. And there have been so many rumors about you. You're really shameless. If you can, find a boyfriend, Stella said imperiously. If you find a boyfriend and get married, then your father and I will not force you to marry Drake. Madison stared coldly at the three people in front of her and almost burst out laughing. She didn't believe for one moment that Stella and Kelsey hadn't known about her relationship with Luke. And Stella actually dares to shamelessly say things to me, she thought. Does she have no conscience? 
When John heard this, he also spoke up. Although it didn't make him happy, he agreed with his wife. Madison, if you have a boyfriend, it would be best to bring him back for us to meet him. If he's suitable, then you can get married. If he's not suitable, you will marry Drake. Madison bit her lips again and stared angrily at Stella, who looked so proud of herself. I do have a boyfriend, she forced herself to say. I'll bring him over for you to meet, so you can cancel this Drake business immediately. That won't do. What if you're lying? Stella interrupted. You bring him back for me to see first. Otherwise, don't blame us for doing something that you'll regret. Without even pausing to catch her breath, she continued, Our family has a lot of business dealings with the Wanners. You don't know that much about it, and you don't know how important that is. John agreed with Stella's words about the importance of the business interests that they shared with Drake's family. Tomorrow, bring your boyfriend over for us to meet. Faced with that imminent deadline, the color drained from Madison's face. In the quiet of her room that night, Madison found it impossible to sleep. She laid on the bed in a cold sweat. Her phone rang, but she wasn't in the mood to see who was calling. Thoughts were running rampant through her head. She knew that Stella and Kelsey didn't like her. Because her brother, Zach, was away on a trip, they had struck while the iron was hot. And now they were chasing her out of the house. But even if her brother rushed back to protect her, there would be nothing much she could do. They want me to get married. To drink, she thought with horror. How would I be willing to do such a thing? The idea made her skin crawl. The image of his fat body, bald head, and vulgar behavior popped into her mind and made her squirm. Her phone pinged. She forced herself to calm down, and this time she picked it up to take a look. It was a message from Zach. Madison, what are you doing? Is mom making things difficult for you? The message read. Madison's eyes teared up. She loved her brother. They shared the same father. And although they had different mothers, he was the only person she considered true family out of the whole crowd. The others didn't care about her, so she didn't care about them. Madison typed a response. Help me, Zach. Mom wants to marry me to Drake. Please hurry back. She was desperate to ask him for help. But then, instead of pressing send, she deleted the words one by one. She sent another reply and said, I'm fine. Then she added some trivial news. She felt so alone, and she badly wanted her brother to come back to lend her his support. But she couldn't do that to him. Zack was busy with more important matters overseas. If she disrupted his work because of her predicaments, she would feel guilty later. She placed the phone back on the bedside table. A boyfriend? Where am I going to find a boyfriend? She wondered. And one who agrees to marry me, she thought. She padded downstairs barefooted to get a glass of water and heard Stella and Kelsey talking in the kitchen. She stopped to listen behind the door. Mom, if Madison really brings a man back, we'll let her off the hook just like that. Kelsey was wearing a pink nightdress. It made her look especially radiant and fresh. This is such a good opportunity that's presented itself. I don't want to see her becoming a stain on our family. Are you stupid? Do you think your mom is that stupid? Didn't you hear everything I said to her? It's not just that she has to bring over a boyfriend. Although Stella's tone was reprimanding, she was clearly doting on Kelsey. It's about her getting married. As long as Madison remains unmarried, I'll think of ways of getting her married to Drake, Stella announced. Madison shivered when she heard her stepmother's words. Luckily, Drake has taken a liking to Madison. She said, Naturally, I have to consider his feelings. She smiled at Kelsey. Look how well you've done for yourself in the end. You're now with Luke. The Morrises are very rich. Kelsey smiled shyly. She felt very lucky when she thought of Luke's handsome face. Madison couldn't stand listening to them anymore and snuck back up to her room as silently as she had come. At that very moment, she reached a decision and made a plan. When her mother and sister had gone to bed, 
She quietly crept into the den where the family's documents were filed and grabbed her birth certificate and social security card. The next morning, she left the house very early. People were already out and about, and the streets were filled with the scent of spring. Madison stood at a corner and counted under her breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She was now 23 years old. She would count up to 23 men passing by on the street. When she reached number 23, if the man was under 30, looked healthy, and didn't seem to have a family, she would propose to him. She would make that 23rd man her husband and would be free of the Greenwalds for good. The 20th man who appeared was a foreigner with a messy beard. When she counted to 21, the man was clearly over 30 and had a wife and children by his side. 22 was a gentle and refined-looking man who wore glasses and had the appearance of a professor. Madison held her breath. Her eyes stared ahead as she waited for the next man to walk over. Suddenly, a pair of ragged shoes appeared at the corner, and Madison was about to see who they belonged to. Madison's heart dropped. Without scuffed and dirty shoes, the man was undoubtedly poor. If she brought such a person home, would she really be able to get Stella and Kelsey to back off? She lowered her eyes and fell into deep thought. Earlier, the previous night, she had thought that if it came to worse, she would ask her classmates to help her get through this. But after hearing the conversation between Stella and Kelsey, she knew it would be a far more complicated matter to solve. She needed a husband, and she needed one now. If the man was really just a poor person, as long as he was honest and reliable, she was willing to marry him. She had no problems with that. Hmm, I don't know. If she wants to leave, then let her go. I don't care. A familiar voice drifted over, deep and pleasant. Madison raised her eyes. There was only one person in front of her now, and he had his back on her. She knew within her heart that that man talking on the phone would be her future husband. As she stood there gathering her courage, her phone rang. She grabbed it out of her bag and answered it without thinking. It was Stella. Madison, your father and I are waiting at home. Hurry up and bring him. Her next words gave Madison the necessary shot of resolve. If you really don't have a boyfriend, that's fine too. Drake is still waiting for you. Madison took a deep breath. Her stepmother's cynical laughter still resounded in her ears. With her hands tightly clenched, she ran over and grabbed the corner of the man's jacket. As he turned around to look at her, he wrapped up his phone call. Forget it, I don't like people like that. Madison was beyond flustered and didn't know what to do next. But then she thought of Stella and Kelsey, who were waiting for her at home. If she backed off now, she would regret it for the rest of her life. She closed her eyes, lowered her head even more so she couldn't see the man's reaction and spoke. I dare you to marry me? Looking at the somewhat familiar head in front of him, Ian narrowed his eyes and pursed his lips. Perfect. I have my papers on me and everything I need. She just came back from the courthouse, he answered. The voice became more and more familiar. Madison suddenly looked up, and when she saw Ian's familiar face, she was shocked. What? Him again? I've already upset him once before, she thought. The two most embarrassing moments in her life had involved the same man. At that moment, Madison could only think of turning around and walking away, pretending nothing had happened. I'll start this all over again, she thought. But Ian's response was about to surprise her. Madison was petite and of average height. Standing in front of Ian, who was six feet tall, she was a little small. Before she could regain her senses, she was effortlessly pulled into a black SUV parked by the curb. It was a distinguished-looking vehicle, but very low-key, rather like Ian himself. They walked out of the courthouse with Madison in a fog. My first proposal. My first marriage. And this is it? 
She thought. She had paid a few dollars, had her photo taken, signed a piece of paper, and was suddenly a wife. She turned back to look at the man beside her. She had only gotten to know his name when she had seen it on the marriage certificate. Ian Weston. With his eyebrows slightly raised, Ian turned to look at the woman beside him and frowned. He never did impulsive things. Why was I so impulsive this time? He wondered. The question was worth thinking about. But now, he was obviously interested in his new wife. Madison couldn't believe it when she got into the car again. They had only met twice, and she'd only been in his car twice. She had only just found out his name, but they were already married. Ian casually placed his copy of the marriage license on the dashboard. Madison silently turned her head to look out the window. Ian didn't say a word until he had started the car. His voice carried a touch of coldness. Where are you going? he asked. Madison was stunned for a moment and then gave him her address. Her thoughts wandered to what was awaiting her at home. She was about to tell Ian about it when his phone rang. He grabbed his headset. Ian Weston speaking, he answered. The interruption gave Madison her first opportunity to size him up. He had straight eyebrows, an attractive high-bridged nose, and well-formed symmetrical lips that were quite sexy. His movements were steady and reserved. I wonder if he's a steady type, too, she thought. But would a steady type impulsively jump into marriage with a stranger? What's the situation? Check their blood pressure first. And their glucose and cholesterol. Do the basic. If it really doesn't work, go and find the head nurse. Pour in the nutrient solution, I know. I'll be right there. Ian said in an attempt to calm down the anxious young nurse on the other end of the line. Before they reached the next junction, he stopped the car on the side of the road. Sorry, he said. Something came up, so I can't take you back. When I'm done with my work, I'll come straight to your house to talk to your parents about our wedding. Madison felt like she was sleepwalking. She watched Ian put the marriage license away in the glove compartment and get out of the car to hail a taxi for her before turning around and driving away. She climbed into the taxi and only came to her senses when she recognized her neighborhood through the window. She was almost home, and she didn't have a husband by her side. She was about to tell the driver to turn around and drive away, but Kelsey, who had been waiting by the door, saw her arrive and told her mother. Madison saw Stella come out of the house, so she had no alternative but to get out of the car. Stella and Kelsey walked toward her. When they noticed she was stepping out of the taxi alone, they felt pleased, but didn't let it show on their faces. They went up to her and each affectionately took hold of a hand. Madison, you weren't here in the morning. We thought that something had happened to you. I'm just so relieved to see that you're fine, Stella said, pulling on Madison as if afraid she would run away. She exaggeratedly tilted her body to peer behind her stepdaughter. Didn't you say you were bringing your boyfriend over today? Your dad and I are ready. Where is he? Is he coming over later? Even though it made her unhappy, Madison had no choice but to deal with her family. She had to avoid falling into a dangerous situation. But Stella's words made her feel embarrassed. Yes, he had to do something. He'll probably be here later. When she said this, Madison felt a bit guilty. Although she knew she had come out of the courthouse with Ian just now, he wasn't there by her side. We were on our way over, but he received a phone call and had to go somewhere else, Madison added. Kelsey and Stella thought she sounded guilty and secretly exchanged a look, but they didn't say anything. They let her into the house. Madison was silently cursing. They were only starting, and Ian had already managed to upset her. Damn, man, how can he be busy with work on the first day of his marriage? She wondered, irritably. For some reason... Madison recalled the sentence, Next time, don't randomly take a man's towel. She blushed at the memory, partly out of shyness and partly out of anger. He had suggested she had taken his towel deliberately. As she scolded Ian in her mind, she was pushed into the living room. 
Her father and Drake were sitting on the couch waiting for her. Drake gave Madison a sleazy smile when he saw her enter. The sight of it made her skin crawl. Hello, Madison said, and quietly sat on the other side of the couch. John nodded. He wasn't surprised that Madison had failed to bring anyone back with her. In truth, Stella and Kelsey weren't the only ones who knew that Luke had been Madison's boyfriend. Although John was also aware of this, he hadn't said anything. After all, he was still slightly biased when it came to his daughters. He had hoped for Kelsey to win over the Morris family, while Madison was to sacrifice her happiness for the good of their own family. You get more beautiful every time I see you, Drake flirted. Without hesitation, he got up from John's side and sat down beside Madison. He reached out and tried to grab her hand, but she pulled it away. Drake frowned and asserted, That's okay. We'll have plenty of time to get to know each other better when we're married. She could feel him leaning closer to her, and she immediately stood up and stepped away from him. Her brows knitted tightly, and she told John, I need to tell you something. Drake didn't seem at all embarrassed by her reluctance to touch him. He just sat there, eyeing her hungrily. I taught you better than this, John said angrily. This is no way to treat your fiancé. She's so stubborn, just like her late mother, he thought. She challenges me at every turn. Is it any wonder I don't even like her? You will marry Drake, and you will do well to treat him with respect. He continued firmly. We'll talk about this later. Despite having prepared herself for his reaction, Madison still felt a bone-chilling coldness at her father's words. Her hands clenched into fists around the handles of her bag. Stella and Kelsey watched the scene play out from the sidelines. They didn't step in. They both knew that Madison would not get out of this. She would end up marrying Drake. Just listen to me, please, Madison said, raising her voice. She knew they wouldn't believe her, and she hadn't brought Ian with her. But the truth was that they were married. She gritted her teeth. I got married today. I just came back from the courthouse. She took advantage of the silence that ensued and continued. As you are all well aware, bigamy is illegal, which makes it impossible for Drake and me to be engaged. In her family's eyes, she had embarrassed both them and Drake. Nonsense, John said. Did you get married? Why wasn't I told about it? He yelled. He pointed a finger at Madison and continued, You're my daughter, and you follow my rules. You can't just go and get married to anyone you want. Creepy anyway. Luke, bring him here immediately. His words pierced her heart like a knife. She hadn't thought that her father would go as low as this. No wonder his reputation had always been so bad. What will people think of me if even my father treats me like this? She thought. Madison's mouth curled into a mocking smile. While she had initially been a little afraid, she now felt completely at ease. Even if Ian had left directly after they had gotten married, he had given her a most powerful weapon against her family's intentions. As long as she was married, they could no longer interfere in this aspect of her personal life. Her relationship with her family would no longer be as intimate as it had been before. Now, she was the daughter who had run off without their approval. He had matters to attend to. He'll come over when he can, she told her father. Glad to have maintained her dignity, she turned around and made it toward the stairs. If that's all, I'm going up to my room. Stop right there, John shouted, enraged. Call him over this instant. I won't believe you until I see him. If you don't show me your husband and proof of your marriage today, you will marry Drake, no questions asked, he announced. She reached into her bag and pulled out a copy of the marriage certificate. That should do it, she thought. She returned to the living room and placed the document on the coffee table. Stella walked up to her and picked it up. When she saw it, she frowned. Why did you do this? I have no idea. Her eyes were resentful, 
and Madison felt her heart fill with glee. As you can see, my name is no longer Greenwald, Madison said, and Stella saw that she was telling the truth. It was obvious from the document that Madison was indeed married. She suddenly wanted to call her husband, but she didn't know him well enough, and yet she blushed at the thought of hearing his voice. John came over to look at the marriage certificate, and as he read it, he became incensed. Unacceptable divorce him immediately, he said, his entire body trembling with barely contained rage. You will marry Drake, do you understand? Drake watched them, his expression darkening. Madison looked at her father in disbelief. He was willing to send his son overseas to get a degree and manage the family business just so that he would reap the benefits and not have to see him for years. He let his younger daughter steal his older daughter's boyfriend, and now he was trying to force her to marry a man twice her age. Finally, she saw him for what he was. Lowering her eyes, she firmly shook her head and said, I'm sorry, but I won't divorce Ian, and I won't marry Drake. She felt a stinging pain in her cheek. Her father had slapped her. In just two days, she had gotten slapped by three different members of her family. A terrifying silence took over the room, broken only moments later by the sound of someone ringing the doorbell. Kelsey disappeared from the room and went to open the door. John went into a rage. You're evil. My family has no use for a daughter like you. Either you divorce that man and marry Drake, or you can pack your bags and go. His shouts echoed through the house, carrying it to the hall. Madison's face turned pale. She stayed where she was, unable to say a word. She didn't understand. They had told her to get married, and she had done just that. She didn't understand why her father would say such things to her. Everyone would probably ridicule her if word of this got out. She couldn't tolerate being treated like this by her father. Do you really see me as such a bad person? She asked him directly, looking him straight in the eyes. None of them had noticed that Kelsey hadn't come back since she had gone to open the door. You all wanted me to get married, she continued. So I got married. And only two hours later, you're forcing me to get a divorce? Are power and wealth more important to you than the happiness of your children? How can you be so self-absorbed? Even brother was forced to leave his home for you. It seemed that she wasn't afraid of being slapped a second time. She knew that her words would infuriate him, but had said them anyway. When John raised his hand to strike her, she closed her eyes and prepared herself for the pain. However, the blow never came and Madison slowly opened her eyes again to see Ian standing in front of her with his hand wrapped around John's wrist. His simple yet firm action suddenly made Madison want to cry. She was neither overly emotional nor very fragile, yet the man before her instinctively made her want to rely on him for protection. Hello, sir, he said. I am Ian, Madison's husband. He pulled Madison toward him with his other hand and only then did he let go of John's wrist. He nodded at him in apology for the rudeness of his behavior. While his attitude appeared humble, he possessed an aura that made others feel inferior. Stella stared at Ian, stunned. She walked over to him and asked in disbelief, What did you say? You're Madison's husband? Kelsey's face had turned pale. Just one look at Ian was enough for everyone to know that he was superior to Luke. How can she be so lucky? Kelsey thought. She was just dumped by Luke, and she had already found this guy. Her fingers curled into fists, and her nails dug into her skin. The look she gave Madison was pure jealousy. Ian casually swept his eyes over the people in the room. He took Madison's hand in his, the heat passing through her like a warm current. It flowed through her entire body, concentrating on her heart. I'm sorry I'm late. There was an emergency at the hospital, and I had to rush back, he said. He seemed very calm, although he was unhappy with what was happening. 
He knew how to hide his emotions well. I came here to discuss our marriage with the family. John was still seething, but Ian's sudden appearance had shocked him enough to distract him a little. Sternly, he asked, When did you get married? And why didn't you tell us about it? Don't you know that Madison is already engaged to Drake? Madison looked at her father in disbelief. He really would do anything just to get ahead in life. He was slandering her in front of her new husband. Would he really sacrifice his children for his family's wealth, she thought? Ian's gaze turned to Drake and he spoke. I'm sorry, but as far as I know, Madison and Drake haven't tied the knot yet. As long as she isn't already married, she has the right to choose her husband. He stood close to her, his body and words shielding her from her family's cruelty. This is what a man should be like, she thought. Ian was no fool. He had heard the argument when he had come inside. Upon entering the living room, he had seen John raising his hand to Madison and had stopped him. Now that he was facing the people in the room, he was quite angry. They obviously all thought very highly of themselves and had a natural sense of superiority. He didn't like people who thought they were better than others. I'm surprised you are brave enough to marry Madison, Stella said. With what all the rumors going around, aren't you afraid that she'll cheat on you? I'm sure everyone has heard about the events of these past few days. We didn't think she would find anyone to marry her, she mocked. Ian didn't even turn to look at Stella as she spoke. I believe her. I believe that she's a good person. I'll never regret marrying her. He stated nonchalantly. His voice was low, yet his words were convincing. Madison felt like she might cry at what he had just said. She trembled slightly. Even her father didn't believe her. But this man, whom she had only met twice, believed her without hesitation. No matter what his motives were, Madison's heart was warmed by his words. Ian turned to Madison and lowered his head slightly. The look he gave her was especially intimate in the eyes of outsiders. In a pleasant voice, he told her, I brought some things. They're in my car. Could you get someone to bring them in? She blinked twice, then asked one of the help to fetch them. When they returned, everyone was shocked. Although Ian hadn't brought many things, they were all luxurious. There were two bottles of top-tier wine from 1945 from a winery in Bordeaux. Then, two boxes of fine cigars and several expensive tonics. All the gifts screamed high status, and both John and Stella stared at them with wide eyes. Drake looked over and rubbed his nose. There weren't many people who could casually afford such things. The price of the two bottles was ridiculously high. Ian wasn't paying attention to their reactions, however. He just stood there, holding Madison's hands. I'm sorry I married your daughter so hastily, sir, he said. I know I am only visiting for the first time today, but please believe me when I say that I will treat her well and protect her from harm to the best of my ability. Please entrust me with her, Ian assured. His voice was sincere and sounded natural. Madison felt smitten. It was the most romantic thing she had heard in years. His words brought John back out of his shock. He opened his mouth to speak, but couldn't think what to say. All he could do was straighten up and nod in agreement. Stella and Kelsey looked at Ian. Then, Stella gestured to Kelsey, who understood, and went up to stand beside the man. Curiously, she asked, Hello, brother-in-law. I've never seen you before. Where do you work? You know, my sister. When did you meet? Ian didn't answer. He followed John and took a seat on the couch. Madison sat down beside him. The couch was full and Kelsey had to sit on the armrest. I remember she had a boyfriend in college, Kelsey said. Which you? Good. I'm glad she had someone too. She regarded him with a pure, harmless look on her face. Hearing this, Ian raised his eyebrows and looked at Madison, who was sitting silently beside him.
Driggs understood that he had lost his opportunity to marry Madison. He was unhappy with this turn of events, but didn't plan to leave just yet. He decided to stay and observe. Who does he think he is? He thought, glaring at Ian. Who were his parents? Drake was angry with the man who had dared snatch away his woman. Kelsey, John interrupted his daughter's interrogation sternly. He looked at Ian, frowning. He felt the pressure the man's appearance had put on him, and he turned to him. You said your name is Ian. What kind of work do you do? What is your situation at home? Finally, Ian replied, I'm a doctor at Mercy Hospital. My parents live together, along with my grandmother, and I have two older siblings, a brother and a sister. My brother helps take care of my father's company, and my sister is overseas right now. She doesn't come home often. Oh, your family also engages in business? John was intrigued, but he wasn't surprised, having seen the gifts that Ian had brought. It was obvious that the man was rich. Now, somewhat more satisfied with his daughter's choice of husband, he asked, And what area of business is this? To be honest, I don't know too much about the company. It's mainly my brother who helps run it. I focus solely on my own work, Ian answered. His tone was level, and he was neither servile nor overbearing. He seemed to have answered all of John's questions, but completely ignored all of Kelsey's. She didn't know why, but she didn't ask again. Then Ian spoke. It's my plan to continue on my own career path in the future. I will not be taking over the company when the time comes. Kelsey's mouth twitched into a smile. A doctor was not as impressive as Luke, who would inherit family's business. Not to mention that her fiancé's salary alone could crush whatever the salary of a doctor was. Her disappointment in how well things had turned out for Madison quickly faded away. Even Stella let out a sigh of relief. But John wasn't pleased. Ian was just an ordinary man, after all, and he wondered if he should object to the marriage again. If Madison married Drake, the benefits would be much greater. Ian didn't give John a chance to speak, however. I'm a doctor, he said. I hope my wife will understand this and support me in my career. If Madison ever becomes tired or unhappy with our marriage, we can get divorced. I will not force her to stay, he stated. He said this mainly for Madison to hear. He wanted her to clearly understand his attitude. Whoever he could marry to is my choice. I have no intention of divorcing you, Madison replied. Madison's words hit John like a slap in the face. The meaning behind them was obvious. She wouldn't divorce Ian now, nor would she marry Drake. She was taking control of her own life. Madison noticed Ian moved slightly. He seemed lost in thought, but she couldn't tell what he was thinking. Then the corner of his mouth rose slightly, and she felt a little panicked for a moment. Excuse me. Well then, you can tell everyone that your marriage has nothing to do with our family. And don't expect to see support from us in this new lifestyle of yours, Stella said, her words cutting. Our family won't be opening a hospital for your new husband. And it's not because we couldn't, but your actions today show that you're content with marrying an ordinary doctor. We have every right to ignore you. It's not like your father didn't find a perfectly suitable husband for you before you decided to run off like this, Stella added. Madison understood what Stella was saying. The family didn't want anything to do with her, no matter her situation in the future. She looked at her father, who was still as cold-blooded as ever and then at her sister and stepmother. Finally, she turned to Ian and spoke. That's all right. I don't regret marrying Ian. She stopped as if confirming her words to them and herself. Later that night, Ian parked the car by the river and opened the window, letting the fresh air inside. They didn't speak. It's not too late for you to change your mind, he told Madison. He didn't want to force her into anything. I helped you with your family, and I will help you further if you want me to. But if you don't want to be my wife, we can end it, he asserted. However, he continued as he turned to look at her, 
if you decide to go forward with our marriage, I don't want us to get a divorce later on. He went on to explain. Divorce is a taboo word in the Weston family, but you deserve to choose, regardless of the reason why you pursued me in the first place. He took in her beauty. She was naturally gorgeous, and the makeup she wore now only enhanced this. He had been stunned by her looks the very first time he had seen her. On top of that, she was also very charming. He wasn't ready to let her go. Madison looked at him. This was the first interaction they had had alone since they got married. Suddenly, she smiled. But didn't you just say that you won't allow a divorce? So I can't refuse to be your wife now, right? And I still need you to help me with my family. Also, you seem to need a wife too, she teased. Her eyes were bright, and it was as if she could see straight into his heart. I don't think my answer really matters. Am I right? They both knew that she was. They looked at each other for a long time. Then she suddenly stretched out her hand to Ian and said, I hope we have a happy marriage. Ian looked at her hand and raised his eyebrows. After a moment, he reached out and took it. They shook hands. They were two strangers taking one of the most important steps in life together just hours after meeting. We'll go to see our house tomorrow. Then I'll bring you back to my family's place in the afternoon to meet my parents, Ian informed. My family will start preparing a proper wedding. We'll set the date and have a ceremony, he added. She nodded in agreement. She didn't have any objections and knew she wouldn't regret her decision. They agreed that she would record the events of their life together on her phone from time to time. He drove her back to the Greenwald house. Before he reached it, he suddenly stopped the car. Why are you... Madison asked, confused. There was still a short distance from the house. She looked up and saw a man standing in the middle of the road. She frowned. Ian looked at the man, recognizing him. He turned to Madison. He was silent, but there was something strange about him. He couldn't tell what he was thinking, and it scared her a little. It seemed that this was a feeling that Ian often gave people. She opened the door and got out of the car, walking up to Luke with an indifferent look on her face. Softly, she said, I heard you will be marrying Kelsey. Congratulations, I'm also... Married. Luke finished her sentence. Then he stepped closer to her, pulled her into a tight embrace, and said, I'm so sorry. I was wrong. Can you forgive me? I won't get engaged to Kelsey. I won't marry her. Can't you get divorced so that we can be together again? Luke wasn't speaking particularly quiet, and Ian heard his words from inside the car. His eyes narrowed and his expression hardened. There was suddenly a dangerous charge in the air. Ian watched the two of them hugging in front of his car. There was no great change in his expression, but he began tapping against the steering wheel steadily with his index finger. One, two, three. He counted silently to himself. Madison was shocked by Luke's actions. The way he hugged her was just like he had done in the past, and she felt that his embrace was intimate. However, she had known that their relationship was over from the moment that he had shown up at Kelsey's birthday party and had refused to admit that he had been her boyfriend. There was no way to fix it. Four, five, six, Ian continued. She made to push him away, but ended up taking a step back, pulling away from him. Neither of them noticed Ian's tapping or the sudden pause as he watched them interact. You're marrying my sister, please behave yourself, Madison stated. She turned to look at Ian, who was still sitting quietly in the SUV. Firmly, she said, Plus, I'm already married. I think we should keep our distance from now on. She turned around and made for the car door, but Luke grabbed her and held her back. He didn't go in for a hug this time, but his grip was tight nonetheless. Ian resumed his tapping in a very slow rhythm. Although she couldn't hear the sound outside the car, she could see his movements. The obvious tension made her nervous. 
and slowly, she began to panic. Seven? Don't be like this, you know I was forced to do it. My father wanted me to marry into the Greenwald family, but you never told me your last name. I would never have agreed to get engaged to Kelsey otherwise. You have to believe me, Luke explained, obviously anxious. He was completely ignoring Ian's presence. Eight? Madison struggled to break free from his grip, but his hand was still wrapped tightly around her wrist, and he was far too strong. Frustrated and angry, she yelled, Why are you doing this? I gave you a choice, but you still didn't choose me even after you knew who I was. I can't believe I have to remind you of this. Madison! He looked at her with a pained expression. They had been together for four years, and it was impossible to say that they didn't have feelings for each other. He had poured his heart into their relationship. Wait for me. Give me two years, then I'll marry you. Nine? She looked at him in disbelief, as if she didn't know him at all. Suddenly, she smiled, and it was an especially sad smile. But there was something calm about it, like he had just woken up. She hadn't realized that Luke was like this. He's delusional, she thought. He thinks that he's a blessing to everyone else. He thinks I need to beg him for his love. Let go of me, she said furious. She struggled and felt a sharp pain go through her arm. She had already had that arm hurt before, but now it was even worse. Still, she tried to get out of his grip with all her might and shouted, Let go of me, I'm married. Ten. The car door opened suddenly, and Ian got out. Swiftly, he walked over to the two of them, his expression cold. Madison was surprised by his sudden intervention, and she stopped fighting. Even Luke turned around to look at him, his eyes full of dissatisfaction, irritation, and jealousy. Mr. Morris, please let go of my wife's hand, he told him. His voice was emotionless and a chill ran up Luke's spine. After Ian spoke, he just stood there staring at Madison and Luke. The look on his face frightened Madison even further, and she took advantage of the distraction and pulled her wrist out of Luke's grip. She glanced at her husband and quickly got into the car. Luke stared at Ian, only now getting a clear view of the man. He had been shocked when Kelsey had called him to tell him that Madison had gotten married so quickly. He knew what kind of person she was. She was stubborn, but also soft-hearted. He had planned on waiting for her to adjust to his engagement before asking for her forgiveness. But he had never believed in a million years that she would have had a husband of her own within a day. Ian turned around and walked back over to his side of the car. Just as he was about to get in, Luke called out to him. Who are you? he asked, his voice full of anger and jealousy. I won't allow Madison to be with someone like you. You can't afford to give her the life she deserves. You aren't worthy of her. Ian paused. Inside, Madison couldn't hear all their words properly, but based on Ian's expression, she could tell that he was unhappy. Luke was being very emotional, and she didn't want to face either of them just then. All she could do was sit quietly in the car, waiting and feeling uncomfortable. Ian sized Luke up, and the corner of his mouth stretched into a smile, making Luke somewhat nervous. I am Madison's husband, Ian Weston. As for my being worthy of her, maybe you should ask her opinion on that, he said. But regardless of whether or not I am worthy, I know that you most definitely aren't. Luke was furious. He took a big step forward and came close to Ian. It looked like they would break out in a fight any minute. I forbid you from being with her, Luke shouted at him. His face was red, and he looked like he was going to punch him. She doesn't love you. Ian wasn't intimidated by this display. He stood his ground, facing him firmly without backing away. The half-smile was still present on his face. Luke faltered. He clenched his hands into two tight fists, and his eyes lit up like flames. 
He looked at Ian and asked, What are you smiling at? I'm just amused, he said, looking directly into his eyes. Their demeanors were very different. Luke was seething, while Ian was calm. Luke didn't dare act rashly. The more he looked at Ian, the more familiar he seemed. Plus, he knew his last name was Weston, so he kept himself in check just in case. He knew that the possibility of him being a member of the renowned Weston family was low, but he was still behaving cautiously. There is nothing to be amused about, he said, lowering his voice. Suddenly, he remembered Ian's first words to him. Man knew his name. Nervous, he asked, Who are you exactly? Whatever your feelings or thoughts on the matter, Madison is my wife, Ian said, looking at her as she sat inside the car. She is a member of the Weston family now, whether I live or die. Luke's blood began to boil. However, he didn't dare fight Ian. They were very close to the Greenwald family home. If the matter between him and Madison got out of hand, all his efforts would go to waste. Ian, however, didn't care about what Luke thought. He turned around, got into the car, and drove away, leaving Luke standing alone on the street. Ian stopped the car a little farther down the road. Madison glanced back, but Luke was already gone. She quickly looked away and asked, What did you say to him? Ian's movement slowed down a little, but the change was almost imperceptible. When he calmed down, he turned to her and spoke. I think you should keep your distance from other men now that we're married. She was stunned. Under normal circumstances, she would have thought that he was jealous. However, these weren't normal circumstances. They hadn't married for love, and they weren't a real couple. Their union only served the purpose of helping each other out, so it made no sense for him to be jealous. But she knew that she was in the wrong. She let out a long sigh, and then lowered her head and leaned back in her seat. In a soft voice, she said, Sorry, I didn't know that he was coming. He's my ex-boyfriend, but we're finished now. In fact, he's my future brother-in-law. Ian narrowed his eyes and pursed his lips. He didn't interrupt her, but it was clear that he wasn't impressed. I don't know what else to say, Madison said. She wondered if she would have to tell Ian about everything, but she had already given him a summary of the situation. It was as she had said. Luke and she had dated, and now he was marrying her sister. She felt a little more relaxed now that Ian knew about it. Sorry that I didn't tell you earlier. It won't happen again. Ian raised his eyebrows, then he suddenly got out of the car. Is that it? She thought. Is my first marriage just going to end like this? But Ian walked around to her side and let her out. The floor of the SUV was a little high up from the ground, and Madison was wearing high heels. When she stepped out, she twisted her ankle and lost balance. She tipped over, and Ian reached out to catch her. He grabbed her around the waist with his hand without hesitation, and she instinctively placed her palm on his shoulder. They looked like two lovers about to kiss. Coming to her senses, Madison lowered her head, blushing. She could feel the touch of his hands, warmth passing through the thin fabric of her blouse, heating her up. Sorry, it wasn't on purpose. She apologized. Ian helped her stand straight on her feet again. Then he closed the car door and accompanied her back over to the Greenwald house. I told him you were my wife, Ian said. Madison blinked hard. She wondered what he was talking about. Then she came to her senses and remembered the conversation they had had before in the car. She blushed even more deeply and nodded without a word. Although they weren't that far away from the house, she felt like they had been walking for ages. She was so embarrassed she wanted the ground to open up and swallow her. God only knows what he must think of me. First pulling off his towel, and now falling into his arms like this, she thought. Finally, they reached the door, and she turned around to say goodbye to Ian. However, they were interrupted by the sound of Kelsey's overjoyed voice. 
Hello there, she said. He looked around to see her in the doorway and then turned away from her to look at Madison again. He reached out and cupped his wife's cheek in the palm of his hand, and he moved forward a little. She felt the warm touch of his lips on her forehead, but she didn't have time to register anything else. Just like that, he stepped away again and said, Good night. I'll pick you up tomorrow. Both sisters were stunned by what had just happened. As he drove away, Kelsey walked down the steps and stood next to Madison. Kelsey watched the SUV drive away in disbelief. She turned her eyes to Madison and saw how calm she was. She couldn't help but feel a little jealous. Although Ian's family background wasn't as good as Luke's, she had to admit that he was gorgeous. He has honey-colored eyes, sexy lips, and a handsome nose, she thought. Every single feature would make a woman swoon. Smiling, Kelsey asked, Did you meet him? I've never seen him with you before. Suddenly, her tone became suspicious. What are you doing? Does he know about what you did? Doesn't he mind? She continued, inquisitive. Madison walked through the door, ignoring her. She was being ridiculous. It's all she cares about, she thought. As soon as a man doesn't fawn over her, or give her the slightest bit of attention, there's something wrong with him. Or is something wrong with me? Unbelievable. She couldn't be bothered with her sister anymore, so she headed directly toward her room. She didn't expect Kelsey to take her silence as a sign of weakness and start to stir up trouble. As she closed the door behind her, the tension in Madison's face softened. She sat on the floor and stayed that way for a while as she returned to her senses. Some time passed, and she absentmindedly raised her fingers to touch her forehead. He kissed me, she realized. Just like that, out of nowhere. She had thought him to be very reserved, and wondered why he had suddenly taken the initiative. It took her a while to recover from her realization. She picked herself off up the carpet and lay down on the bed. The entire day had been ups and downs, and she was both mentally and physically exhausted. But whenever she remembered that mysterious kiss she had received from Ian, she was strangely energized. She began to think, why did I let him kiss me? She was as confused by her own behavior as she was by his. As these thoughts raced through her head, she finally fell asleep. That night, the entire city was abuzz with noise and excitement, all because of two shocking pieces of news. The first was about the Weston family, who had just announced the marriage of their third son. Apparently, he had gotten married earlier that day, and the family ceremony would be held soon. The second piece of news circling the public was that the eldest Greenwald daughter, who had been the center of the recent scandal, had also gotten married. However, the man she had chosen to be her husband was just an ordinary surgeon. When Madison woke up the next day, she had no idea about any of this. She looked at her phone to see the time and discovered that her good friend Allie Teller had been frantically trying to contact her. She had kept her phone silent for the night and had received no message notifications. She clicked on the message and immediately sat up straight. She opened the links he had sent her and found a number of headlines. The eldest Greenwald daughter marries into an ordinary family. Will her surgeon husband understand the inner workings of the wealthy class? Is the morally questionable Madison Greenwald deceiving her new doctor husband? It was the local city news. Other than the article about the third Weston son, the articles were mainly about her and her unexpected marriage. She didn't understand why people were writing about her. She put down the phone angrily and sat on the bed, trembling. She didn't know what Ian's family was like, but she was afraid they wouldn't accept a daughter-in-law with such a bad social reputation. She wanted to explain everything to Ian. She wanted to tell him that if they got divorced now, she would be forced to marry Drake. But when she picked up the phone, she realized she didn't have his number and threw it aside again in frustration. Suddenly, there came a noise from downstairs. She pulled at her hair nervously and walked down. There, she found Ian sitting on the couch in the living room. Kelsey also wandered in. 
and his darky voice, she whispered, Look who's here. Do you think he's come to divorce you after hearing the news? Ian looked up when he heard Madison enter the room, and her eyes met. On the surface, Kelsey appeared to be concerned about her sister. But Madison knew very well what she actually felt about the situation. Kelsey wanted to spare no effort to mislead Ian. She thought, maybe I should tell him how shameless she is and how she tried to steal my boyfriend. Madison looked at her indifferently, as if her sister was a child telling stories to entertain herself. She said nothing to Ian. In fact, she was quite nervous. She didn't know Ian and didn't know how he would react to her family situation. After all, what family would be willing to accept a daughter-in-law with a tarnished reputation, she thought. If he really can't deal with it and wants a divorce, I'll just have to accept that. Madison mumbled in her head. Kelsey looked at Madison and Ian, smirking slightly as she took in their appearances. The moment she had first laid eyes on Ian, she had been attracted to his handsome appearance, and the fact that he was her brother-in-law only made him more appealing. She hated her sister, so she tried to think of ways to ruin their relationship. She went forward and took Madison by the arm, gently this time. With a seemingly innocent and anxious expression, she said softly, Madison, you have to explain this to your husband. What if he divorces you? just got married yesterday. If your marriage ends so quickly, no one will want to marry you ever again. Kelsey was acting concerned, but Madison saw through her fake attitude and didn't even look at her. She only looked at her new husband. When she was about to say something to him, Ian stood up from the couch, pulling her along with him. He frowned slightly and asked, Why haven't you changed your clothes yet? Madison looked down and remembered that she was still wearing her pajamas. She saw the cartoon dog smiling widely on her top and wished the ground would swallow her up. What did I do to deserve this luck? She wondered miserably. Every time I see Ian, I end up embarrassing myself, Madison thought. I'll go upstairs and change right now, she replied weakly. As she turned toward the stairs, Ian grabbed her wrist unexpectedly. She turned back and looked at him in confusion. For a split second, she thought he was actually about to change his mind about having married her. What happened to your arm? He asked and said. He was a doctor, so it was in his nature to pay attention to injuries. He had just noticed the bruise and was concerned. Madison was stunned at the silence for a moment, but she had a warm feeling in her heart. Other than her brother Alex, no one else in the family ever worried about her. Ian was only the second person to notice or care that something was wrong with her. Even Luke didn't care about me when we were together, she thought bitterly. It was an accident, but it's not serious, Madison said. She didn't want to lie, but she didn't want to make things more difficult for herself either. In her current circumstances, she didn't think she could blame Kelsey. She didn't know Ian well enough to guess whether or not he would believe her if she told him what had happened. Ian stared intensely at her for a minute. There was nothing on his face that gave Madison a hint as to what he was thinking. She suddenly got flustered. But right as she started to pull her hand away, he let her go. You should be more careful from now on. Go ahead and change your clothes. I'll wait for you here, he said choosing not to press the issue. Madison nodded and went upstairs. She could hear Kelsey pestering Ian downstairs, but she didn't pay attention to it. Her heart was beating chaotically, and her emotions were all over the place. Too here to break up with my sister. Kelsey turned to Ian with a deceptively innocent expression on her face. However, Ian didn't even glance at her. Instead, looking at the stairs where Madison had just disappeared. Kelsey bit her lip and asserted, Ian, will your family accept her? She doesn't listen to anyone, even our parents. Normally, 
Kelsey's delicate appearance inspired men to protect her. Luke was a very typical example. She had subdued him, but her tricks weren't working on Ian. He flashed an unimpressed look at her, and then turned to Stella, who was coming out of the kitchen with a tray of snacks, and looked like she intended to speak to him as well. There's no way I'm sitting through this, he thought. I think I'll go upstairs and check on Madison, Ian announced, not caring about Stella and Kelsey's reactions. He strode up the stairs in the same direction his wife had gone. He had seen which door she had gone through, so he wasn't afraid of getting lost. When he reached the top of the stairs, he noticed that Kelsey was trying to follow him. So he spoke. I'm sure you both have plenty to do. Don't worry about me. As he walked away, Kelsey bit her lips in frustration and jealousy. Madison had been with Luke, who had treated her very well. Jealous of her sister's good fortune, Kelsey had thought of ways to get Luke to like her. She used to think that he was the best man in the world. But now Madison was with Ian. Did she always end up with such great men? It's like nothing bad can happen to her, she thought. What are you staring at? Stella demanded. As Kelsey's mother, she was very in tune with the young woman's thoughts. When she saw her pout, she frowned and said, Don't mess around. Ian's good looking, but he doesn't compare to Luke at all. A doctor can't offer you more than Luke can as the future leader of a company. Keep those thoughts out of your head. If Luke changes his mind about your relationship, you'll regret it forever. Stella's words made Kelsey come back to reality. She turned away from the stairs and tried very hard to remind herself that Luke was better than Ian. After Kelsey had returned to normal, Stella ignored her. Originally, she had wanted to ask about Ian's background, but now she didn't need to do so. Ian hadn't come to divorce Madison, which told her everything she needed to know. If his family doesn't care about the reputation of their daughter-in-law, they're either too strong or too weak, she thought. Ian was clearly the latter in her eyes. However, the mother and daughter's thoughts were not something Ian was concerned about. He walked to the door of Madison's room and knocked politely. After hearing a rustling sound inside, he turned the knob, walked in, and froze in his tracks. Madison was changing, but he wasn't sure if she was putting on or taking off her clothes. The light blue sundress was partially pulled up, revealing the light pink bra wrapped around her chest and leaving her shoulders exposed. Sunlight fell through the window and shone on her, making the scene seem unreal. She's beautiful, he thought. Madison turned her head and shrieked when she saw him. The sharp noise made Ian feel awkward, and he realized he was holding the door open for everyone to see. He frowned, walked in, and closed the door. Madison shouldn't be seen by anyone else when she's like this, he thought as he turned around to give her some privacy. Madison's face turned to beet red. Just as she was about to scold him, she noticed he stayed facing the door, so his back was to her. She quickly finished getting dressed and stood by the bed, not knowing what to do. Before she could figure it out, someone else knocked on her door. Ian asked softly, Are you done? She nodded before remembering that he couldn't see her and quickly replied, Yes. I'm all dressed. Ian opened the door to reveal Madison's father. When John saw that it was Ian who had opened the door, he was stunned. Mr. Greenwald, Madison needed some help with her zipper. Her dress was too tight to get it herself, so she thought she had gained a few pounds and shrieked. Did she bother you? Madison gaped in astonishment at his ridiculous story. Ian's tone was very serious. John wasn't happy to see a man in his daughter's room and opened his mouth to complain, but he remembered they were married. All he could say was, You're both still young. Be careful. Then he turned around and left. Ian narrowed his eyes and glanced at his Madison. He didn't speak for some time. When she started to fidget uncomfortably, he said, You shouldn't just let anyone into your room. With that, he turned around and walked out. Madison was so angry that she reached out to grab her bag and considered throwing it at him. 
I didn't let anyone into my room. He just barged in. He's acting like I seduced him or something. Some kind of revenge for when I went into his hotel room, she mumbled. Her hands tightened on her bag in frustration before she took a deep breath and went after him. Kelsey looked up as they came downstairs and couldn't keep the jealous look off her face. Luckily, Stella moved in front of her so they couldn't see her pitiful image. Ian took his wife's hand as they stood in front of Stella. He politely greeted his mother-in-law with a nod and asserted, Mrs. Greenwald will be leaving now. She smiled, but her expression wasn't sincere. Though she didn't let it show, she was furious that Madison had suddenly married Ian. They had wanted her to marry Drake, and there was no way to fix the situation now. If only Ian had been scared away by the scandal, she thought in annoyance. Fortunately for her, she had spent years practicing the virtuous and calm image she presented. Don't come back too late, Stella called out dryly. Ian was very considerate and opened the car door for Madison. Kelsey watched their interaction through the front window with an ugly sneer. Madison's scandal is already in the newspaper, she thought. How can Ian still treat her so well? First Luke, and now this? How does she constantly have such good luck? She complained as she watched them leave. Madison and Ian were in the car when his phone rang. Hello, Grandma, he answered. Madison's ears perked up. This was the first time she had heard anything about her in-laws, so she was curious. I know I just picked her up. I haven't... He paused while his grandmother spoke. Okay, I'll talk to her. Don't worry. See you soon. Madison peered over curiously as Ian hung up the phone. She was dying to say something, but forced herself to stay quiet. Even though she knew the conversation had been about her, she wasn't confident enough to ask about it. Looking at his nervous wife, Ian suddenly smiled and said, I was originally going to take you to our future home, but I'm afraid now isn't the best time. My grandma wants to meet you. Madison widened her eyes at the idea of meeting Ian's family and felt her heart flutter uneasily. Although the two of them had gotten married for their purposes, she was still nervous about meeting the rest of the Westons. This is my first time meeting your family. I can't show up empty-handed. Take us to the mall quickly so I can buy some gifts for them, she said. When she thought about the gifts Ian had brought to her family, Madison felt her anxiety rising. I don't have anywhere near that much money, she thought. What? I don't even know what his family likes. After a minute, she asked, Who will I be meeting today? What do they like? Am I dressed appropriately? I think this is too casual. Turn the car around so I can go back and change. The more she spoke, the more she felt that her current attire wasn't acceptable. This is such a big deal, she thought worriedly. How could he spring this on me so suddenly? I've had no time at all to prepare. Ian couldn't contain his smile, so he drove with one hand, and covered his mouth with the other. But even though he tried to hide it, Madison still saw the grin. Ian, don't laugh, this is really serious, she reprimanded him. However, her husband was unconcerned as they drove farther away from the city. Soon, they would be very far away from the mall. How am I going to buy things, she wondered. My reputation is already tarnished. If I don't bring his family something, I'll make a terrible first impression, and our marriage will be over already. She got even more rattled. Turn the car around, she insisted. I need to buy something. Ian sighed. Okay, got it, he said before he checked the oncoming traffic and turned the car around. Although he hadn't said much, he was still smiling, so she could tell he was in a good mood. However, her mood was anything but good. She fought to keep her hands from shaking as she tried to think of what to bring her in-laws. As soon as the car stopped in front of a large shopping mall, she hurriedly got out, with Ian following close behind. As they walked around, Madison peppered him with questions about everything she considered buying. After all, she had absolutely no idea what his family would like. 
Her solemn attitude and obvious worry made Ian take her seriously, as he answered her questions and helped her find quite a few things. She selected a beautiful scarf for his grandmother and a bottle of high-end perfume for his mother. For his father, she found a simple yet fashionable wallet. When she went to pay for her items, he suddenly grabbed her wrist. She looked up in confusion and saw Ian staring at her closely. Madison, he said, I'm just a surgeon. Are you really sure about being married to me? No matter how bad your reputation is, you're still the oldest daughter of the Greenwald family. You could still marry someone who could offer you so much more than me. Rolling her eyes at him, she shook off his hand and gave her card to the shop assistant. She then turned her head and said softly, Ian, don't you think it's a little late for you to say this now? She plopped her purchases into his arms matter-of-factly and said, I'm not a woman who regrets her decisions. And you decided to be impulsive and marry me, so you're committed. There's no going back now. After saying that, she turned around to walk out. She had originally wanted to buy a nicer dress, but there was no time. Ian quickly caught up to her, held her spoils of war with one hand, and grabbed her hand with the other. After a slight pause, her eyes shifted from their tightly clenched hands to her husband's face. Since that's the case, let's decide not to regret it, Ian said as he looked at her. They walked hand in hand out of the mall, and his eyes were filled with joy as he said, Let's focus on having a happy marriage. It was such a simple sentence, but it affected Madison deeply. For a long time, she repeated his words over and over in her mind. He wants to focus on having a happy marriage, she thought. Is he serious? Does he really want to give our relationship a chance? Ian led her to the car, and Madison followed along in a daze. She angled her head toward him and gazed at him as he drove. Along the way, he kept a slight smile on his face. She found his appearance charming, but she didn't have much time to appreciate it. Before she knew it, they had arrived at the Weston's family home. Before she was ready, he had already opened the car door for her. The gifts he had bought were cradled in one of his arms. She stepped out uneasily and looked at the building in front of her. Her legs felt weak at the sight, and her mouth dropped open in shock. This is it? She thought in astonishment. This is his family home? Even if Madison didn't enjoy great status among the Greenwalds, she still knew a thing or two. The house in front of her didn't look anything like she had expected. I don't even know if I should call it a house, she thought. This is more like an estate. Ian closed the car door, and Madison's hand had already climbed up and unconsciously touched his chest. She asked, Are we at the right place? This can't be your family home. She was all but frozen in shock, but she thought anyone else would react the same way in her position. He looked at her disbelieving face and raised an eyebrow. What did you think my family home would be like? Madison blinked her eyes rapidly, as though that would make a different building appear in front of her. She answered without thinking, I assumed we were going to an ordinary house in the suburbs. This time... Ian didn't try to hide a smile at all. He grinned widely as he reached out and took the small hand that was still on his chest. Without saying anything, he pulled her toward the huge house in front of them. There's no way a family like this will welcome someone like me, Madison worried. Just as they were about to reach the front steps, she suddenly stopped. Since they were still holding hands, this also made Ian stop. He turned around, and the two of them looked at each other silently. She took deep breaths to try to calm herself and build the courage to walk through the entrance. While she had known that Ian's last name was Weston, it had never crossed her mind that he could be related to the famous Weston family, which had a huge real estate empire. If she had, she never would have dared to propose to him on the street. I never thought someone from a family like this would be an ordinary surgeon, she thought. With dread, she rethought every interaction they had so far. I even dragged him to my house to help me face my family. Ian narrowed his eyes. He was smart, so from her reaction he could guess what she was thinking. He took a step back toward her and squeezed her hand in what he hoped was a reassuring way. 
It was a little too forceful, so she frowned slightly as she looked at him. It's too late to have second thoughts about this. Ian's voice was low and had a touch of anger. Madison trembled slightly, realizing this was the first time she had seen him get angry. She stared straight into her husband's eyes. His face was filled with determination, and her heart suddenly skipped a beat. Madison, from the moment you proposed to me on the street, you were mine. As she gazed into his eyes, her breathing became shallow. He held her hand assertively, but didn't lose his gentleness. He pulled her up the steps to the entrance of the house. When they reached the door, she anxiously squeezed his hand. Ian turned to look at her, but she didn't look back, and just took a deep breath. According to everything she had heard, the Wettons were ruthless. They had to be, considering how long their family had been around. They'd been wealthy for longer than this country has existed, she thought. Luckily, Ian was in no hurry and waited for his wife to adjust. He understood her reaction very well. Even I've been nervous when coming here, he thought. For the first time, he really appreciated having someone by his side. The moment the door was opened, Madison felt as if she was entering a castle. Ian confidently gripped her hand and led her inside. Ma'am, Ian is here with his wife, a maid called out from across the room before running toward the kitchen. A moment later, Madison heard an energetic voice reply. Where is she? She fought to keep her anxiety down. Then, an older woman wearing casual but elegant clothes walked in. She said, I've been looking forward to this day. I finally have a granddaughter-in-law. Now, who is this? With that, Madison finally met the renowned and ruthless Diana Weston. Hello, Grandma, Ian said politely as he held Madison's hand. His simple accent was reassuring, but her smile remained stiff. I brought your granddaughter-in-law to meet you. With that, he had cut off Madison's last path of retreat. Now that she had been identified as his wife, there was no chance of escape. Diana wore a pair of reading glasses with a golden chain attached to them and her short, white, curly hair exuded an elegance from a different era. This seemingly amiable woman was completely different from what Madison had expected. It's nice to meet you, Mrs. Weston, she said, as she forced herself to keep smiling. She felt like her heart was being twisted and turned a thousand times. Although the woman looked friendly, Madison knew she wasn't to be trifled with. Diana was the reason she had been so nervous when she found out that Ian was from the Weston family. She thought she had little hope of being accepted by a family matriarch like this. Diana gracefully rushed over, reaching out to grab the young woman's hand. Her shrewd eyes inspected Madison's face as she spoke. You're very beautiful. No wonder my young grandson was tempted by you. Ian released his wife's hand wrapping his arm around her waist instead. Just as he was about to introduce her by name, a couple came down the grand spiral staircase. They looked very similar to Ian, and Madison guessed they were his parents, Edward and Olivia Weston. Indeed, in the next second, he said, Dad, Mom, I brought your daughter-in-law here to meet you. He tightened his grip around Madison's waist, and for the first time, he formally introduced her. Mom, Dad, Grandma, this is my wife, Madison Greenwald. When he finished speaking, the entire family was silent. Madison's heart was in her throat, but she endured the pressure and maintained a friendly smile. Hello, everyone, she said softly. Ian's parents and grandmother raised their eyebrows at her, and she forced herself not to look away. The Westons weren't like her family at all. They seemed like royalty, and made the Greenwalds seem like peasants in comparison. But since she had become Ian's wife, she was part of that family, so she could not allow herself to back down. Madison Greenwald, Diana asked, releasing the woman's hand. You're the Madison Greenwald that's been all over the newspapers. With that, Madison didn't know whether to laugh or cry, just as she had feared. The family already knew about her tarnished reputation. 
everyone assumed that she would deny it or defend herself. However, he understood that if she wanted to be accepted by the Westons, she had to pass the test. Yes, that's me, she confidently replied. She didn't even blush and felt very proud of herself. She raised her head and looked back at the older woman, who was obviously sizing her up. Diana stretched out her hand and shift her glasses. Madison thought that there was a trace of admiration in her eyes in response to her honesty. Is that so? Then why don't you explain all of that to me? Diana asked. Although she spoke calmly, it was clear that a lot was riding on how Madison chose to answer. Madison kept smiling as she asked back, Diana, we've heard rumors that you're ruthless and chaotic. Would you like to explain that? She was so focused on Ian's grandmother that she didn't notice his parents watching quietly, seemingly impressed by her performance. Diana seemed surprised by her response. Don't owe an explanation to anyone, she replied. With that one sentence, Madison knew that even if the rumors about this woman were exaggerated, there was still some truth to them. I'm sure she can be ruthless when she needs to be, she thought. The smile on her face became gentler after the matriarch's response. She leaned against Ian and playfully replied, Then I don't owe anyone an explanation either. Diana raised an eyebrow in amusement and nodded, apparently satisfied with that answer. However, Madison wasn't naive enough to think she would be accepted that easily. Sure enough, in the next second, she questioned her again. Then do you really think that you're worthy of my grandson? You know how out of ordinary your social standing is. The woman's comments carried a touch of irritation, and her eyes were full of ridicule. With your reputation, your marriage is already a joke. Madison blanched at her words. Even though she had mentally prepared herself to be judged, she had never thought they would be so direct. Taking a deep breath, she lifted her eyes and looked straight at her grandmother-in-law. I can't control what others say about me, and I have no way to explain this matter. In a firm voice, she expressed. As soon as she spoke, everyone in the living room looked at Madison in disbelief. They all thought that her attitude was incredibly brave. In their circles, People tended to value their reputation more than anything. When faced with Diana's question, however, she hadn't hesitated to admit that she had had a bad reputation and that she had no way to explain it. Since you have no explanation, why do you think that our family will accept you as Ian's wife? Ian's mother, Olivia, said with obvious dissatisfaction. Madison turned to look at her mother-in-law and calmly replied, Mrs. Weston, if people want to deliberately discredit me, it's useless to fight it, even if I have a sharp tongue. Since that's the case, why should I let it bother me? However, I'm very sorry that I've brought you all such trouble. Her calm and polite attitude were attributes that the Weston family could admire about her. While she may have brought shame to Ian, they couldn't deny that she had many good qualities as well. Although they weren't happy about the situation, they wouldn't completely reject her. Hey, why aren't you saying anything? Are you really just going to stand there while we interrogate your wife? Or are you waiting for us to kick her out? Diana suddenly yelled at her grandson. She grabbed an orange from a bowl on the table next to her and threw it at Ian, who caught it, releasing Madison's waist in the process. She was still muttering, I can't believe my grandson is standing there while his wife is questioned. Madison let out a sigh of relief. The grandmother's words meant that she had already started to accept her, and Edward and Olivia's gazes seemed to have softened a little. Ian held the orange with a smile. Instead of making a fuss, he took out a folder that he had stashed in the pile of gift boxes and handed it to Diana. It contained two thin pages full of information about Madison's reputation throughout her life. As they were reading... Ian led his wife over to the couch and sat down. He handed the fruit to her, and she sniffed it when he looked away. While he hated oranges, they were Madison's favorite, although he didn't know that. Ian was about to say something when Diana crumpled the papers into a ball. She threw it at him and said angrily, 
kind of stunt are you trying to pull here? Ian didn't dodge, but reached out his hand to swat the paper ball away from Madison. Grandma, calm down. If you don't change your attitude when we have children, I won't let you see them. His reply was quiet, but it shocked the rest of his family. Diana immediately came over and sat beside Madison, looking at her with anticipation. She asked, My dear, are you pregnant? How far along are you? Madison blinked in shock as she saw her grandmother-in-law looking at her with a face full of joy and pride. Even Olivia and Edward had come over and looked at her flat abdomen with expressions of happiness. Just when she thought the situation couldn't get worse, her face turned bright red as she heard Diana say, I knew my grandson had it in him. For the second time since they had arrived, Madison didn't know whether to laugh or cry. They had just met a couple of days before, so of course, she couldn't be pregnant. How am I going to explain this? She thought in disbelief. Ian was surprisingly relaxed about the situation. He waved his grandmother away and pulled Madison up from the couch. Grandma, don't get excited. Madison isn't pregnant yet. I'll let you know when she is, he said. That sentence was like a bucket of cold water that quickly snuffed out the family's excitement. Diana looked at her grandson angrily. Why did you get my hopes up? You actually used such a topic to play a joke on me? Do I need to teach you a lesson? Ian didn't bother with the old woman. Instead, looking at his parents and softly asking, Dad? Mom? When do you have time to have a meal with Madison's parents? Diana became angry at his lack of response, and she was not used to being ignored. She took a step forward and dragged Madison away from him. What are you so happy about? I haven't agreed to let Madison be your wife. You have to get my blessing first, she announced loudly. Ian's face darkened, and Diana gave him a smug look, as she clearly believed she could control everyone in that room. Looking at her self-assured face, Madison smiled. The Westons didn't seem to be as difficult to get along with as she had imagined. Even Olivia, who was reputed to be very cold, had only spoken up because she was worried about the family. Ian ignored his grandmother again and reached out to grab his wife's hand and pull her back to his side. The family continued to talk among themselves, and Madison sat on the couch. After a while, she was finally able to give them the gift she had brought. Madison and Ian decided not to stay for dinner. However, the family seemed to have accepted their relationship. While they had been concerned about Madison's reputation, people like them didn't need to worry much about that sort of inconvenience. There weren't many things that were serious enough to harm their name. After leaving, Ian drove them to the Griffin for dinner, which amazed Madison. The Griffin was very upscale and expensive. The restaurant had a few private rooms, which could hold anywhere from 5 to 40 people, and was very exclusive. There was always a line of people waiting for one of the rooms, but there were more seating in the main dining room and outside. This was the first time Ian had brought Madison out for a meal, and it was a truly amazing place. The two of them chose a seat next to the window in the dining room. The last thing they expected was for Kelsey and Luke to walk at the moment they sat down. Unfortunately, the other couple spotted them immediately. Ian? Ethan? Kelsey called out, even though they were still far away. That way, Madison couldn't pretend that she didn't see them. Before she could think of an excuse to get rid of them, Kelsey had already strided over, holding on to Luke's arm. Are you guys here to eat? she asked. Why don't you go to a private room? It's so noisy out here. Ian didn't say anything. He narrowed his eyes and raised his eyebrows at his sister-in-law. Kelsey had yelled across the restaurant, so she had attracted the attention of many people. Most of those around them were now looking in their direction. Kelsey seemed to have just realized that her actions had been somewhat rude, and she shyly expressed, Hey... How about you guys come and eat with us in the private room, Luke booked? 
Every time Luke and I eat together, he always orders too much. I can never finish it all. Ian stayed silent as he reached out and poured a glass of water for Madison. He seemed content to let his wife handle the matter however she saw fit. Ever since they had reached the table, Luke's eyes had been fixed on Madison. She seemed to be more attractive to him than ever. Without waiting for her to respond, he joined in the invitation. Yes, how about we go in together, he said. I'll order a few dishes I'm sure you'll like. Don't you love oranges, Madison? The griffin has a wonderful duck dish with an orange glaze. Why don't I order you one? At that, he turned to look for a server without giving Madison a chance to refuse. When he saw one, he waved them over. Ian had been sitting in silence. At that moment, he looked up at Madison sitting opposite him. She sensed an emotion in his eyes that she could not fathom and felt a slight chill run through her body. There's no need. We're fine right here, she said. You guys can go and eat in the private room. Madison ignored their surprised expressions as she continued, I'll order what I want to eat myself. Ian and I have other things to do later, so don't worry about us. Luke was obviously unhappy with Madison's rejection, and Kelsey was unhappy about his attitude toward her sister. Madison, even with everything going on, we're still family, she quipped. If others find out that the Greenwald sisters are eating in the Griffin, but you're in the front area while I'm in a private room, what will people say about me? Kelsey asked. Her words were filled with hurt, and there was a pitiful expression on her face. But there was a cunning look in the depths of her eyes. You should go in with us. Otherwise, you'll be unhappy with me later. As if she realized she had said something wrong, Kelsey covered her mouth as she subtly looked around the room and saw everyone watching them. She then uneasily looked at Ian, who was still calm and collected. Just then, they could hear people start to whisper around them. So that's Madison Greenwald. No wonder her reputation is in shambles. Look how difficult she's been with her sister, one of them remarked. She caused a huge scene at her sister's birthday event the other day, another one added. Yes, I heard she tried to steal her sister's boyfriend. She's really something else, the first one replied. Did you see the newspaper? She comes from a good family, and she married an ordinary doctor. I guess she couldn't get anyone better with her reputation, a third one stated. I guess she had to marry whoever she could in order to try and save her status, the second one chuckled. That's so sad, her family gave her everything, and this is what she's gone and done, another one filled in. Madison's ears were filled with the words of the surrounding diners. In the past... She could pretend she didn't hear people gossiping about her and just get on with her life. But now, for the first time, she felt incredibly embarrassed. Her hands shook slightly, and her face went pale. If her family had treated her well, they wouldn't have tried to force her to marry Drake. If Kelsey had treated her as a sister should, she wouldn't have lost her boyfriend of four years. If her family had enforced her hand... She wouldn't have married Ian so quickly. The only thing they see is my supposedly immoral behavior, she thought. Madison bit her lips and didn't say anything. Ian was sitting right in front of her, and she couldn't bear to raise her head and look at him. Just earlier that day, she had answered Diana's questioning with confidence. But now she was being publicly insulted. I know he said he wouldn't, but I bet this will make Ian consider divorcing me. I don't know why he would subject himself to this, she thought. Madison took a deep breath and closed her eyes. But before she could adjust, she felt a warm hand on her shoulder. When she opened her eyes, she found that Ian was actually standing behind her with his hand on her. His gentle voice again gave Madison a warm feeling in her heart. I'm very sorry. Maybe you didn't hear my wife clearly, he said even though the irritated expression on his face made it clear that he wasn't sorry at all. We don't have time to eat with you today. Please don't disturb our meal. After saying that, Ian didn't even bother to check the reaction of the intruding couple. 
He stretched out his hands and waved over the waiter Luke had summoned, who had been awkwardly hovering about ten feet away. Kelsey and Luke's faces were pale, but they didn't say a single word. These two guests are lost. Show them to their private room, Ian requested. The whispered gossip started up again as soon as he finished speaking. Are they just lost? Someone said. Are they even related? Why are they bothering that couple? Another one questioned. The people at the tables around them started to smirk at the scene. Their eyes turned to look at the man standing behind Madison. He felt he looked familiar, but no one could figure out who he was. Before Luke left, he glared at Ian, remembering the domineering attitude he had adopted when they had met outside the Greenwald house. He couldn't control himself, and his words came out before he could think twice. I'm not sure how you managed to eat at the Griffin. Other than using a scalpel, what else can you do? What are you even good for? Luke blurted, enraged. Madison looked up at Ian in surprise. Luke has no idea who his family is either. But why is Ian letting them insult him? She thought. Ian raised an eyebrow and smirked as he looked at Luke. Before he could say anything, the manager of the Griffin rushed over and started apologizing profusely. Dr. Weston, I am so sorry. I didn't know you were here. Which room did you want to use today? I'll arrange it for you right away. Luke and Kelsey were stunned. The Griffin served countless prominent people every day. What kind of person got such attention from the manager? The Griffin and the Pink Star Hotel were both famous for their high-class hospitality. They graciously accepted and served anyone who could afford to be a patron, whether they visited regularly or spent a month's salary to come for dinner. However, Kelsey and Luke had never seen the manager of the Griffin indulge a customer in this way. When the manager started apologizing to Ian, the people around them stopped what they were doing and stared wondering who he was. Ian seemed not to notice the gazes of the other guests. He just glanced over at Luke before turning back to the manager and saying softly, There's no need to trouble yourself. I just hope that no one will disturb us today. My wife is shy and doesn't like this kind of attention. The manager was smart and very good at his job, so he quickly called staff to escort Kelsey and Luke away. When Luke was led toward his private room, Ian relaxed. He lowered his eyes and saw Madison still gazing up at him. When she saw him looking at her, she shyly lowered her head. The manager stood off to the side as if he wanted to serve them himself. However, Ian didn't pay any attention to him. He held Madison's shoulder firmly as he bent his tall body down and gently kissed the right corner of her brow. Then... In a gentle voice, he said, Madison, I'll follow your lead and see how you deal with Luke. But if the situation doesn't get resolved, you can stay with my family for a week. Her body instantly froze at the idea of staying at his family home. That plan didn't appeal to her in the slightest. They barely tolerated me today, and he wants me to stay there for a whole week, she thought. Ian lingered for a while before returning to his seat. He allowed the manager to wait on them and ensure that they weren't disrupted by the people around them. The conflicted look on his wife's face elevated his mood as he assumed she was taking the situation with Luke seriously. However, Madison looked conflicted because of her husband's suggestion and not just because of the situation with her future brother-in-law. Her feelings had always been very cut and dry to her. From the moment Luke had betrayed her, she had banished him from her heart and her mind. I'm done with him. But if he insists on pestering me, what can I do? I can't control him, she wondered. She looked at Ian's face and was unsure of what to do. She felt increasingly frustrated and thought, How does he expect me to handle this? I have no idea what solution he'd be satisfied with. After dinner... Ian drove Madison home and politely went to greet John and Stella. Unfortunately, Kelsey and Luke were there as well. For a moment, 
Madison's face tightened in annoyance, but she took the breath and pushed past it. Dad? Mom? Madison politely greeted her parents as she waited for her husband to follow her inside. Ian walked in, carrying his wife's handbag. It was delicate and small, which looked rather out of place in his large hand. It was a tiny gesture, but when Luke saw that the two of them were getting more familiar with each other, he got anxious. For a moment, he forgot the reason he had come over. Mr. and Mrs. Greenwald, Ian said with a nod toward them. John mumbled a quiet response. He was still very unhappy that his daughter and Ian were married. Earlier that day, Drake had called to say that he still liked Madison. But since she was taken, there was nothing her father could do. John also assumed that Ian's family was poor, which he was not thrilled about. There's nothing good about this match if you ask me, he thought. Stella, on the other hand, seemed to be happier. When she saw the two of them come in, she smiled from ear to ear and went up to greet them. She pulled them toward one of the couches in the living room and said, You two came back at the perfect time. I have something to discuss with you. When Madison heard that, she looked at Stella with some amusement. My family never discusses anything with me, she thought. What could they possibly need now? Ian didn't say anything and just held Madison's hand as he sat next to her. Kelsey and Luke were sitting on the opposite couch, and she was shyly leaning against his arm. Mom, what's going on? Madison asked after she sat down. Stella turned to look at Kelsey and beamed at her. Then she turned to face Madison and asked, Madison, who told you and Ian hold your formal celebration? You're Kelsey's older sister, after all. So if you and Ian want to have your event soon, I'll have her and Luke wait. I'm sure they can be patient. With that, Madison understood what they wanted. They don't care about our plans. Just want to make sure they won't make a social blunder if Kelsey gets married too soon. She noticed how her sister was leaning on Luke and felt her heart sink a little. I can't believe they want to get married already. If he's moving on that quickly... I hardly meant much to him, she thought. However, she didn't feel heartbroken anymore. Now she just felt like a fool for caring so much about the wrong person. Gathering her thoughts, she turned to her father and spoke. Dad, if Kelsey wants to get married, then let her get married. Ian and I haven't discussed when we're going to hold the family celebration. When John heard this, his eyebrows raised slightly in surprise. Stella started to fidget uneasily but her face was full of excitement. After a moment, she collected herself and asked, Are you sure that's the right decision? You should have your formal wedding celebration first because you're the eldest. Then, when it's done, Kelsey can have her wedding. Otherwise, who knows what people will say if she gets married first. Luke looked at Ian condescendingly and said, It can't be that the Weston family can't afford a wedding, right? After all... You're just a surgeon, and marrying into the Greenwald family calls for a huge celebration, which is very expensive. Do you need me to lend you some money? As Luke spoke, Madison's face darkened, and she narrowed her eyes at him. She had found out Ian's background that day, but even if she hadn't, she would never allow someone to speak to her husband that way. Then, she remembered what had happened at the restaurant and thought, Is Luke an idiot? This is the second time he's acted like this today. Luke, did you forget what happened at the Griffin today? Why do you insist on making a fool of yourself? She shook her head at him in disappointment. Ian glanced over when she said that, and the corner of his mouth turned up slightly. On the other hand, Luke's face was flushing red with anger. He stayed silent as though he was shocked at her response that he didn't know what to say. The Griffin? John zeroed in on that point and turned to look at Ian. His eyes narrowed, making him look like he was scheming. What happened at the Griffin? Nothing happened, Dad, Kelsey interjected. Luke brought me there for dinner, and we happened to see Ian and Madison. She paused and lowered her head shyly, saying, Then Luke proposed to me over dinner. Madison smirked. 
Though neither she nor Ian said anything, Kelsey looked positively thrilled at her news. But her fiancé was barely paying attention. He was subtly observing Madison, hoping to see some disappointment on her face. John didn't respond either, and just sat there with his signature frown. He turned to his oldest daughter and said, Madison, you and Ian discuss it and decide on a date. Next weekend, we'll announce Kelsey and Luke's engagement and pick a date for her wedding. I'll have Zach and Alex come back for the celebrations. Thank you, John, Luke said, realizing that he needed to react to the announcement. John heaved a sigh of relief and nodded to Luke. Even though he was unhappy about Ian entering the family, he was becoming increasingly satisfied with Luke. For the first time, he spoke to Ian. If you have any questions, just tell me. Don't embarrass our family when the time comes. No matter how bad Madison's reputation is, she's still our oldest daughter, and she represents this family. She's not a tool your family can use to climb up the social ladder. Madison clenched her jaw at her father's words. It took everything she had to keep herself from educating her father about Ian's background. If he knew who Ian was, he'd never speak to him that way, she thought. However, she had to keep her dissatisfaction to herself for the time being, and let her husband decide when to reveal that information. She glared at her father and asserted, Dad, we can figure everything out ourselves. If you have time in the next few days, you can meet Ian's parents. In fact, I went to meet the Westons today. She thought about the meeting at Ian's home earlier. She felt incredibly embarrassed about her family's behavior. They had warmed up to her a bit by the end, but her parents were still treating Ian like the scum of the earth. Madison, can you tell us about Ian's family? Kelsey suddenly asked. Her expression was full of innocence, but Madison knew better. If being a doctor is the reason behind his good reputation, then his family must have a decent life, right? When she comes, maybe you'll be able to afford a house in the same neighborhood as us. Kelsey stated. Madison managed to keep herself from rolling her eyes. Before she could respond, her husband had already spoken up in a cold voice. Mr. Greenwald, do you mean that we're expected to host a full wedding celebration? John was shocked by what Ian had asked him. He stared at him for a long time, unable to think straight. When he finally did, anger welled up in him. John was shocked by what Ian had asked him. He stared at him for a long time, unable to think straight. When he finally did, anger welled up in him. Ian's just a surgeon. Sprite does he have to ask me such a direct question? I'm the head of the Greenwald family, after all. Does he really think that he's become a part of my family, just because he's married my daughter? If so, then he clearly thinks too highly of himself, he thought. John snorted and glared at Ian intently, aiming to make his dissatisfaction clear. What's wrong with you? he asked, taking the opportunity to give Ian a piece of his mind. You're interfering in Greenwald's family matters? You may be married to Madison, but I can assure you, you are no son-in-law of mine. In fact, I'd be happy for Madison to divorce you. His words silenced everyone in the living room. Madison's face grew even paler. Divorce, she thought incredulously. It seems that in my father's eyes, my marriage is a joke. He was making it very clear that he didn't think Ian would be an asset to the family. My parents couldn't care less what impact the divorce would have on me, Madison thought. In fact, they don't give a fig about my opinion. All they ever care about is money. Kelsey and Luke looked on both feeling somewhat pleased. It was imperative to have social and economic influence in families like theirs. If you don't, you would find yourself on the chopping block. This, they were sure, would be Ian's fate. Dad, don't be angry. Ian just asked one question, Kelsey said, smiling smugly. She gave Ian a patronizing look. Ian, don't be too upset. Father didn't mean what he said. After all, we aren't any old family. Father has his hands full with the company. 
He simply doesn't have time to have dinner with your parents. And your wedding celebrations with my sister will have to wait, she explained. Kelsey looked at Luke for support. Then she aimed her gaze at Madison. When she spoke, pride glowed in her eyes, and her voice was full of false tenderness. It's just that Ian is different from Luke. Luke is the heir to the Morris family, set to inherit his family's fortune. One day he'll be the CEO of the Morris Corporation. Luke and I are having a marriage reception because our family's business is in partnership with the Morris Corporation. Every word Kelsey spoke was saccharine and filled with ill will toward Madison and Ian. Although she spoke as though she had their best interests at heart, her pride shone through. Madison didn't respond. She refused to compete for anything. In her eyes, they could have what they wanted. She wouldn't let it affect her life. Ian listened silently to John and Kelsey's words. He didn't speak for a long time. His attitude made the Greenwalds assume that he was afraid. Madison smiled faintly. Little do they know that Ian isn't easily bullied, she thought. Kelsey looked at Ian's face and felt a surge of satisfaction. He's just an ordinary surgeon with no social standing, she thought. She only draws that he's good looking. It was just like her mother Stella had said. Besides his looks, Ian couldn't hold a candle to Luke. How about this? She said, when the time comes, bring Ian's parents over, and Luke and I will let you share the marriage reception with us. How does that sound? Stella was standing off to the side. She approved of what Kelsey was saying, but when she spoke, she pretended to scold her. Your brother-in-law's family isn't wealthy like ours. They would likely feel uncomfortable in a situation like that. Are you trying to stress your sister and brother-in-law out? I know you feel sorry for Madison, but you shouldn't have suggested that. Ian narrowed his eyes and smiled to himself. He couldn't care less about what Kelsey and Stella were saying. His dark eyes were focused solely on John, who was seated on a leather chair. John seemed to feel his gaze. He turned his head to face Ian, who hurled his anger at him. What you aren't saying is that you want to marry Madison to Mr. Wanner, if she were part of a family business exchange. Mr. Greenwald, I never would have pegged you for being so cruel. Ian didn't give John a chance to respond. He turned his eyes to Madison and said softly, You should rest today. I'll go home and talk to my parents. We can have lunch together tomorrow. He turned as if to leave. Astounded by the way he had stood up for her, Madison absently nodded. Ian ignored everyone. John finally came back to his senses. In the moment before he spoke, the tension in the living room grew so that he could cut the atmosphere with a knife. Ian, stop right there. Is that how you talk to your elders? John stood up and balled his hands into fists at his side. He had never met such an arrogant man. Ian walked back over to the couch. He raised his eyebrows slightly as if he didn't understand why John had suddenly shouted at him. Mr. Greenwald... What are you so angry about? He asked innocently. John's chest rose and fell rapidly. He was furious that Ian was mocking him. But as a man of high standing, he knew he should show restraint. At the same time, he couldn't let this blow to his ego go unaddressed. Madison gave Ian a meaningful look. Silently, she rose from her seat and turned to her parents. Dad, Mom, I'm going upstairs. It seems Kelsey wants to celebrate her wedding first, which is okay with me. Ian and I aren't in a hurry. It was just a reception. She really didn't care that much about it. Besides, she had already obtained their marriage certificate. She walked over to Ian and whispered to him before heading upstairs. Drive carefully. Ian looked down at Madison and smiled softly. He reached out and touched her hair, nodding. He saw Luke clenching his fist out of the corner of his eye. Ian only spoke again after Madison had disappeared upstairs. His tone was especially sarcastic. Clearly don't care about my wedding with Madison, Mr. and Mrs. Greenwald. My family will handle our wedding reception. Madison married me because she wanted to, not because she was forced to. As for Kelsey and Luke, you have no say in our relationship. Everyone in the living room was stunned into silence. 
Then Ian looked directly at Luke. Since you and Kelsey are getting married, I'll of course give you some wedding gifts. If they're not valuable enough, I'll be happy to send more. After that, he turned to John, nodded politely, and walked out. That arrogant jerk, John thought, seething with rage. For a moment, he wanted to pummel him. For a random surgeon, the man has a lot of nerve. He made some decisions before going to his study with Stella. Kelsey's phone rang, and she stepped out to the garden so that she could talk in private. Luke stayed in the living room alone. He looked at the staircase, making sure no one was watching. He headed for Madison's room. Madison sat at the end of her bed, gazing at the stars outside of the window. As the summer wore on, the night sky always grew more beautiful. Constellations dotted the dark blue expanse above her. She sighed and reached out to grab her purse. Inside was a small silver bracelet engraved with the words, My dearest daughter. She looked at it, running her fingers gently over the words. A raw and long-held sadness gleamed in her eyes, which welled up with tears. She knew that Stella wasn't her real mother. Her real mother had never been accepted into the Greenwald family, and so Madison had been an awkward addition, like a puzzle piece that didn't quite fit. And besides, her father didn't even like her. He made that very clear. She didn't even have a picture of her mother. That made her saddest of all. Madison thought of Ian. I fooled him into such a chaotic family. Will he grow to resent me for it? She tried not to dwell on it. How he reacted was out of her hands. He was already intertwined in this mess, and all she could do was count on him to save her. But what my father said in the living room, how will they explain all this to Drake? She wondered. She, and possibly her father as well, feared his reaction. Perhaps that was why they still wanted her to marry him. Madison was so deep in thought that she didn't even realize that Luke had sneaked into her room. The shadow soon rose in front of her. She turned her head to look, and when she saw him, her entire body froze. Her mouth fell open in shock as she stared at him in disbelief. Before she could cry out, Luke covered her mouth with his hand. Madison panicked and thrashed against him, but he shushed her to keep her quiet. This was the last thing she would have expected of Luke. She prepared to kick him, punch him, and do whatever she had to do to get him out of her sight. Because Ian had entered her room earlier that day, she had made sure to lock the door this time. But Luke had waltzed in so easily that it seemed he knew where the spare keys were kept. Little did she know, Kelsey had been the one to tell him. Madison, Luke said, removing his hand from her mouth and moving closer to her. You can't possibly want to be married to Ian. We were meant to be together. His eyes betrayed his regret. Madison had a lot of life experience under her belt, but this was the first time she had encountered something like this. She was being accosted in her own home by her future brother-in-law and her former boyfriend. She was in a state of shock. All she could do was stare at Luke in disbelief. He reached out and gently stroked her hair. He grabbed her hand and held it tightly in his. I don't like Ian. I don't like him being so intimate with you. Please, leave him and wait for me, he expressed. This was the last thing Madison would have expected from Luke. And the audacity. He had broken into her room at night while her entire family was downstairs. Her heart beat hard in her chest and her face turned crimson. Luke seemed to notice that Madison wasn't enjoying his presence. He backed away from her slightly. He realized she was about to scream, so he immediately quieted her. Madison, if you cry out, everyone will find out that we are together right now. Your father will disown you for being unfaithful, and you will never see your brother again. Is that what you want? He threatened. Luke knew that Madison cared about her brother more than anyone, and that it was easy to manipulate her using Zack. As expected, she immediately stopped struggling. 
the corner of Luke's mouth curled up, and he let go of her. However, he was still standing uncomfortably close. He continued to stroke her hair from time to time, and his gentle eyes glimmered with tears. Madison, what happened to us? How did we get like this? He asked softly. Madison's body remained stiff, her face impassive. Without her permission, he wouldn't do anything to her, this she knew. But she hated being taken by surprise. She looked at his face in disgust, a face that she had smiled sweetly at just a few days before. Luke's heart ached. If you had told me at the beginning that you were the eldest daughter of the Greenwald family, then it would be you and I who would be preparing to wed. There would be no Kelsey, no Ian, just you and me, he blabbered. Madison didn't speak. She didn't remove her hand from his, but she also continued to level a warning gaze at him. She was afraid that if she let her guard down, Luke would get the better of her somehow. Then everyone would believe the rumors that she was a characterless person. I know you hate me, and I know I'm the last person you want to see, but Madison, we were together for four years, Luke pleaded. He was not a reckless man. He just hadn't realized how much his actions had hurt Madison. You know I'm the Morris family heir, but why didn't you ever tell me who you were? If I had known your identity, you wouldn't have had to marry a useless surgeon. You wouldn't be in this predicament right now, he continued. Madison suddenly smiled. There was not a trace of warmth in it. She looked into Luke's eyes. If you're here to talk to me, would you please treat me with respect? Or do you think it's appropriate for you to lay your hands on me without asking? She glared at him. They were both silent for a moment, each overwhelmed by emotion. Madison was growing anxious. She was afraid that Luke would refuse to leave. And if anyone in her family were to walk in on them, her reputation would be ruined entirely. She wouldn't have the chance to turn the situation around. Even Ian might not believe her. Madison felt so grateful to have someone in her life who always protected her. The corners of her mouth twitched. If people thought she was unfaithful, Ian might not want to be with her anymore. He might think that she wasn't worthy of being with him. The thought made her want to cry. Perhaps it was the despairing look on her face that made Luke come to his senses. He had never seen her like this before. He immediately let go of her hand and went to sulk by the window, as he watched her gather her composure. Then, Madison stood in front of him. Luke felt a sudden panic wash over him. He looked down at his feet and felt ashamed of himself. Seeing Luke like this made Madison, against all reason, feel bad for him. She was only human. After all, she had loved this man for four years. She could pretend all she wanted that none of it had been real, but that wouldn't be the truth. She really loved him with all her heart. Now, seeing that he still cared about her, she softened a little. Luke loves me, he's making that clear, but he still chose to abandon me, she thought. Madison was too tired to blame him at this point. It was what it was. She had to let her grief, and Luke, go. She had always been a reasonable person when it came to feelings. The moment he had betrayed her, she had realized that it would never work out between them. Madison, trust me just this once, okay? Luke looked anxiously at her. There were things he had wanted to say to her a few days before. But before he knew it, Madison had come home married. He cleared his throat. I'll marry Kelsey as soon as possible. Then once I have control of the Morris Corporation... I'll divorce Kelsey and marry you. We'll be together once again, he explained. All the sympathy that Madison had been feeling disappeared in an instant. Luke's shamelessness astounded her. She couldn't believe that these words were actually coming out of his mouth. Luke, even now you still think that two women belong to you. Are you really that naive? Madison questioned, enraged. She was filled with burning anger. Luke had barged into her room. He clearly didn't care how it would be perceived if anyone found out. She had already lost much of the affection she had previously felt for him. Now that she had heard these words, she no longer had any feelings for him at all. 
Although she held her composure, her voice still betrayed some of her anger. Do you really think that the Greenwalds are fools? Marrying my younger sister to gain control of the family? Then marrying me after you've secured your position at the top? It's all so despicable. I won't allow it, nor will Kelsey. Who's not that stupid? To mention my father, who will come after you if you try to do this. Madison stated sarcastically. An awkward expression flashed across Luke's face, but he was still determined not to give up. Madison, you know I was forced into this engagement. I'm the only son in my family, although I do have a younger sister. If I don't inherit the Morris Corporation first, I would never be able to take care of you the way I long to, he replied. Luke looked at Madison, his face fully displaying all his arrogance and stubbornness. He felt as though she was being heartless, that she was refusing to see the big picture. Do you really want to live a middle-class life? You're the eldest Greenwald daughter. How could you marry that man knowing the kind of life you'll have to lead with him? Luke mocked. He continued without waiting for her to speak, and his words were filled with urgency. I need you to know that everything I'm doing is for our future. I want us to live our lives to the fullest. I want to love you and pamper you. But in order for that to happen, we must make some sacrifices. You have to believe me. I'm not doing this for myself. It's all for you. For our future. Madison almost laughed out loud when she heard this. For me, she thought. Luke watched me embarrass myself at my sister's birthday party. He stood idle as I almost ruined my reputation. He threw me aside without a moment's hesitation when I asked him whose boyfriend he was. Then he simply watched as my sister humiliated me in public, and here he is claiming that he's done all that for my benefit. She hadn't realized that Luke wasn't happy with the way things were currently going for him, that he still wanted to end up with her. She stepped back and took a good look at him. He was so different from Ian. In fact, it was astounding how different they were. Madison raised her eyebrows and spoke to him in a patronizing voice. Luke, thank you for being so considerate of me. I can't believe how imperceptive I've been. I somehow failed to see your good intentions. But unfortunately, I'm already married to Ian. Wedding reception or not, I am Ian's wife. From now on, she continued, I think you should keep your distance. Whether you do it for Kelsey... Or for me. We can't continue like this. Kelsey doesn't know you're here yet, so I think we should finally put an end to this meeting before she finds out. Madison firmly stated. Of course, Madison didn't actually think he deserved the false flattery. And, as for whether Kelsey found out about this meeting or not, she couldn't care less. As he listened to Madison's rejection, Luke grew increasingly distressed. He stepped forward and reached out as if to grab her arm, but she moved out of his way toward the window. She opened it, stuck her head out, and called out to Kelsey, who was still talking on the phone in the garden below. Hey, Kelsey, I think Luke might be lost. He came into my room, but I think he's trying to go to yours. Would you please take him there? She called out. Her words almost made Kelsey forget that she was still holding her phone in her hand. Then... Coming to her senses, she hurriedly hung up and rushed inside. On her way upstairs, Kelsey considered the situation. The way Madison had explained it had made it all sound like a misunderstanding. But Kelsey wasn't stupid, and she had a good idea of what had really happened. Luke had clearly intended to go to Madison's room right under her nose. Her heart dropped, but she was determined to deal with the situation in her own way. Madison was surprised to find that when Kelsey walked in, she wasn't her usual cold self. In fact, she was behaving like any normal, loving, younger sister. Her words, when she spoke, were full of tenderness. Madison, I'm sorry. Luke had told me earlier that he was planning to go to my room. I forgot to tell you before I answered the phone. Who would have thought that he would be so anxious to see me that he would go to the wrong room? She explained. The corner of Madison's mouth rose in a half-smile. She stood there quietly, letting Kelsey say her piece. Meanwhile, Luke was feeling more embarrassed by the second. 
He had planned to leave quietly, but Madison had ratted him out. Seeing that Luke wasn't responding, Madison went over and grabbed hold of his arm. Smugly, she said, Kelsey, if Luke doesn't marry you, you'll become such a joke. If you need help, you must remember to tell him. Then, she faced Kelsey and doubled over with laughter. At the sound of Madison's laughter, Kelsey felt goosebumps prickling her skin. What are you laughing at? She demanded. What did she mean by if he doesn't marry you? She wondered. This was ridiculous to her. If it turns out that the Weston family isn't able to hold a wedding reception for Ian and Madison, Madison will have to treat me with the utmost respect whenever she sees me. Her mind went into overdrive. It had always annoyed Madison when people looked down on others. Apart from being a member of the Weston family, Ian was a fabulous surgeon. Mercy Hospital was the number one hospital in the state, and Ian was the best surgeon there. Madison couldn't think of many people in the world who would ridicule a doctor like him. Her family's entitled nature was preposterous. Do you want to know why I'm laughing? She said. Her eyes glowed with mirth as she looked at her half-sister. I'm thinking about how much money I'll need to borrow from you for my wedding with Ian. Madison spoke. Kelsey scoffed, but Madison didn't bat an eyelash. She watched as Luke was the first to walk out of her room. Kelsey followed him but paused in the doorway. Madison, do you really need me to remind you that you might not even have a wedding reception? But if you marry that man... You'll be criticized, even though you're a Greenwald, she blurted. Her eyes bore into Madison, whose smile had completely faded. Kelsey continued smugly. Father and mother won't be caught dead with the Westons. They'll never let you do this to our family. Maybe I should ask father to beg Drake to stay with you. Kelsey turned on her heel before Madison had the chance to speak. She followed Luke out leaving Madison in a panic. She took some deep breaths to calm herself. Eventually, she couldn't help but laugh at the whole situation. I should have expected this. People are so petty. I really shouldn't expect anyone to have my back. Ian has been protecting me for two days, and I'm already becoming useless at standing up for myself, she thought. Her thoughts turned to the effect her family dynamics must be having on her husband. It must be humiliating for him that my parents refused to meet his parents. No wonder he got so angry downstairs, Madison analyzed. Madison desperately wanted to help. But as someone who had never been valued by her family and lived in fear of them, how could she gather the courage to stand up for their relationship? She was still worrying about this problem when her phone suddenly alerted her that she had a new message. She looked down at it in frustration. But as soon as she saw who it was from, a smile spread across her tired face. It was her brother, Zach. Madison, it's late and I bet you're still up. Do I need to come back just to make sure that you get some proper rest? Zach, don't worry. I'm getting ready for bed right now. Well, get to sleep as soon as you can. Don't put off your advertisement project anymore. When I get back, you can help me advertise. Madison thought carefully about how to respond. After a few minutes, she replied, Hey, were you aware that Kelsey is getting married? Do you think you'll come back for the wedding? Zach didn't send a message for a long time. Finally, her phone buzzed. Do you want me to come back? Madison looked at Zach's reply, and her mood lightened significantly. She hugged the phone to her chest, lay on the bed, and replied to him, I haven't seen you in so long. You'd better come back, and when you do, I have something important to tell you. Across the ocean, Zack smiled at his phone screen. He responded in mock sternness. You'd better go to sleep now. I don't want to come back only to find out that you haven't been taking care of yourself. If you say so, she replied, and then she looked up at the ceiling and considered the possibility of Zack meeting Ian's parents. 
Her mood had finally improved a little. At that moment, what she wanted most was for things to be as easy as possible for Ian. She didn't want to put any more stress on his plate. As soon as she put the phone down, it rang. Upon seeing that the caller ID read Ian, Madison blushed a little, and she felt giddy. When she picked up the phone, her voice caught in her throat a bit. Hello? Ian raised his eyebrows slightly. Are you crying? He asked softly. Madison's face turned a deeper crimson. She was simply feeling shy. Why would he think I'm crying? What's there to cry about? She wondered. Her favorite brother was coming back to support her. Soon, she would be fearless. She settled in under the covers, getting comfortable. No, I'd just fallen asleep, that's all. She lied. Well, I just wanted to let you know I'm home. Also, I have to go to work tomorrow. Grandma asked me if I would spend some time with her. Hope so. I'll pick you up at noon during my lunch break. He replied. Won't you be tired from working so much? Madison retorted. It will be too hectic for you to pick me up. I can just take a cab there. You should focus on work. Ian smiled a bit at that. She was so considerate. He was silent for a moment as he considered the offer. No, I insist. Why don't you wait for me at home, and then I'll come over to get you as soon as I get off work. He proposed. Without giving her a chance to react, he quickly said goodnight and hung up. After setting down her phone, Madison went into the bathroom. She prepared for bed, and then finally went to sleep. Tired from all the graduation prep, Madison slept until nearly noon the next day. After waking, she quickly got dressed. She was about to go downstairs to eat something when her phone rang. It was an unfamiliar number. She picked up the phone and politely greeted whoever was on the other end of the line. Hello, Madison Greenwald speaking. Madison, this is Ian's grandma, Diana. Her voice was a little loud, as if she wanted to convey how excited she was to be talking to Madison. Are you up and about? Why don't you come over and eat with me today? Then the two of us can go out for a stroll, she asserted. Madison was stunned by Diana's directness. It took her a moment to gather herself again. Just the day before, it had seemed like she didn't like Madison. Now, not only did she have her phone number, she was speaking as if she genuinely cared for her. Madison sputtered a response. Yes, of course, I'd love to. When the call ended, Madison scratched her head in frustration. A moment later, her door creaked open. Her widened eyes scanned the doorway where Ian stood. He had heard part of her conversation and could clearly see that she was intimidated by his grandmother. It was written all over her face. Her black hair was tangled up into a bird's nest from both sleep and scratching her head nervously. He stepped into the room, his pitch black eyes giving her a once over. Madison suddenly felt very vulnerable, almost as if she weren't wearing anything. She was about to ask him to leave when suddenly he spoke. You're looking a little worse for today. It was clearly a playful remark, but it made Madison self-conscious nonetheless. She looked into his eyes, which seemed to burrow into her soul. She immediately lowered her gaze. Ian noted her shyness. If I had known you were alone, I would have come in sooner to talk to Grandma with you. I know she can be a lot, but once you get to know her, you'll get along splendidly, he explained. Madison chafed a little at this. Ian's adamance that she spend time with Diana almost seemed like a threat to her. And besides, she was still feeling self-conscious about her looks. Is he displeased with my appearance? How could he have made that comment about me? Doesn't he know how lucky he is to be with someone like me? The more she thought about it, the angrier she became. Ian was oblivious to Madison's thoughts. He sat down on the bed and looked around. When he saw the things that Madison had been preparing the previous night for her graduation, his eyes narrowed. He felt her silent presence behind him and suddenly turned around. Let's get ready to leave. I have another surgery scheduled in the afternoon, he said. Madison nodded and went to the bathroom to tidy herself up. Then she grabbed her purse, and Ian laced his fingers with hers. They remained like that, holding hands. Meanwhile, the rest of the Greenwald family was preparing for lunch. 
Ian and Madison greeted Stella when they came downstairs. Madison acutely felt that the energy in the household was off. John's eyes bore into Ian, filled with contempt, while Kelsey looked at Madison, her eyes alight with disdain. An alarm sounded in Madison's head. Having grown up in his family, she knew better than Ian how to protect herself. But just as she was about to say something, Ian pulled her away and out the door. Madison was grateful to him. She would never have thought that she could be so protected by someone. By the time they arrived at the Weston's house, everyone in the family was waiting for her. Ian couldn't stay long and soon rushed back to the hospital to prepare for the afternoon operation. Come, Madison, Diana said cheerfully once Ian had left. She pulled her over to the dining table. Olivia and Edward were already sitting down. After lunch, you can go to Ian's room and rest for a while, Diana continued. Once I wake up from my nap, we'll go for a walk. Seeing as Madison couldn't possibly refuse, she nodded and smiled. Madison was pleased to find that the Westons were extremely polite. She felt like they really cared about what she had to say. Diana's eyes flashed with joy, and she seemed to approve of Madison, whom she now thought was kind and courteous. Suddenly, Olivia leaned in. When do you think your parents will have time to sit down and discuss your marriage with Ian? She asked. Madison's heart skipped a beat. She felt like she was walking on thin ice. She opened her mouth, about to respond, when Diana interrupted her, changing the subject. Grateful, Madison heaved an inner sigh of relief and faced Ian's grandmother, who was looking at her cheerfully. She couldn't help but smile back. Actually, how about we go to the hospital to see Ian after my nap? Diana said. If we're lucky, perhaps we can get him to come back with us, she proposed. Madison nodded again. She couldn't refuse. However, she never would have thought that during the afternoon she was spending with the Westons, her family would still be plotting to hand her over to Drake. After lunch, Edward and Olivia said that they had to get going. They reminded Madison of their request to meet with her parents. Before they left for work, Olivia showed Madison to Ian's room. Standing at the door, Madison felt her mouth go dry. She was still worked up from his comments that morning, and any reminder of him brought them to mind. She shook the thoughts from her head, and taking a deep breath, twisted the doorknob and stepped in. The room was neat and tidy, sparingly yet tastefully decorated. In all honesty, it feels a bit cold and empty, she thought. Madison was reminded of a hospital room. Perhaps this was because of Ian's occupation, but it rang true to her nonetheless. She walked over to his desk. Behind it was a large bookcase filled to the brim with books. Madison inspected his collection. She had expected it to be mostly medical texts, but she was surprised to find many volumes about the stock market. In fact, they took up about half of the bookcase. Is Ian learning how to trade stock? Madison wondered. She didn't know anything about medicine or how to buy stock. Ian's books looked boring, but then she spotted a travel magazine on his desk. Much better, she mumbled. She picked it up and sat on Ian's black and white bed. It was so soft and comfortable that she fell into a trance while reading. Before she knew it, she had fallen asleep. Diana woke up later that afternoon and went to go fetch Madison. When she opened Ian's bedroom door, she found her sleeping soundly on his bed. After spending some time with Diana, Madison was getting tired again. However, Diana didn't suggest taking Madison home. Rather, she made her get up and dragged her to Mercy Hospital. This was the first time Madison was visiting Ian's workplace. Her heart beat uncontrollably in her chest. Have you been here before, dear? Diana held Madison's hand in her own thin hand. She smiled tenderly at her. First, the rumors about her ruthlessness aren't all true, Madison thought. Diana didn't seem to have any objections to her anymore. Ian started working at Mercy Hospital after he returned from England, Diana explained. I tried to persuade him to join the family business instead. Perhaps you could try to convince him as well. 
Madison nodded, but she didn't really want to persuade him. Ian didn't seem like the type of person who liked to be told what to do with his life. Diana was getting up there in years. When she walked into the hospital, people eyed her, wondering if she was there for treatment. However, her vibrant spirit proved otherwise. She pulled Madison up to the 17th floor, where Ian's office was located. The moment the elevator door opened, Madison felt her breath catch in her throat. Ian was standing in the hallway, holding an open folder and explaining something to a group of five young nurses. They were all listening intently and watching with rapt attention, clearly infatuated with him. Madison, too, felt that Ian looked astonishingly handsome. She couldn't help but smile when she saw him, and her breath quickened. Meanwhile, Diana felt a surge of pride upon looking at her grandson. Her smile was so vivid that it seemed out of place in a hospital. People looked at her curiously, but they all talked it up to her being a strange old woman. Diana looked at Madison's rosy face and a trace of slyness flashed in her eyes. She led her directly over to Ian. On the short journey down the hallway, Madison heard snippets of multiple conversations. Dr. Weston is seriously too handsome. Did he have plastic surgery? I mean, have you ever seen a man as attractive as him? A nurse remarked. Not only is he handsome, but he's also kind. I'm jealous of whoever ends up with him, another nurse added. People from other departments have been asking to transfer here. Even some of their top surgical assistants have transferred. And I heard that the new surgeon, Dr. Falta, is trying to think of ways to move him over to her department. Don't you think it's just because they've all taken a liking to Dr. Weston? The previous nurse announced. Well, I think that if Dr. Weston doesn't get married soon, we're going to start seeing a lot more female patients coming in. The other one responded, giggling. Madison couldn't believe how popular Ian was. As she listened to the discussions around her, she watched him. He had never liked hospitals. They felt so cold and soulless. But seeing Ian, she felt, for the first time, that hospitals could also be warm and inviting. My dear grandson, Diana shouted. Immediately, everyone in the corridor turned their heads. Even Ian looked startled. Diana, however, didn't care at all. She laughed as happily as if she found money on the street. My dear grandson, she said, she comes to see you. Madison felt a rush of blood go to her head. There were so many people looking at them. Why had Diana shouted so loudly when Ian was clearly only five steps away? Did Ian now think Madison was a fool or a show-off? Ian furrowed his brow and narrowed his eyes. He closed the medical records folder in his hands and passed it to an intern behind him. He walked over, growing more concerned by the second. Madison felt like all the air in her lungs had been squeezed out. Grandma, why are you here? Are you feeling unwell? He asked, standing in front of them. He couldn't hide his concern. Diana smiled innocently and waved at the nurse behind Ian. Her voice rang out, sweet as candy. No, no, she said, I was just passing by. I assumed you were about to get off work, so I came over to see you, she answered. Now that he knew that Diana was fine, Ian couldn't think of anything to say. Only then did he notice Madison at his grandmother's side. He looked at her sweetly, and the atmosphere around them suddenly changed. Madison felt strange. Normally she was fierce, a force to be reckoned with. But in front of Ian, she softened. She felt as light as a feather as she might be swept away at any moment. When Ian looked over at her, she tilted her head slightly not daring to say a word. He stepped forward, trying to get a little closer to her. He frowned and asked, Madison, did something happen to you? Are you experiencing any discomfort? Madison sighed. It was his professional instinct to ask these questions, so she had to forgive him. He always had to know what was going on. Madison stood in front of him, blushing and smiling. Her attitude amused Ian. She was normally so bold. But right now, she was behaving so timidly. No, I'm not hurt, she replied. Ian raised his eyebrows and asked coyly, Then why is your face red? He reached out and brushed his fingers against her warm cheek. 
In an instant, Madison's ears and neck turned red as well. Looking at the beautiful, blushing woman in front of him, Ian was suddenly filled with tenderness and longing. He removed his hand from her cheek reluctantly. Ian's actions stunned everyone around him, and they all looked at him in disbelief. A patient who had been walking the halls greeted him politely. Dr. Weston, you haven't gotten off work yet. Ian came back to his senses and looked at the patient. He was over 50 years old and had actually fallen at home a few days before. He had been making great progress and in just a few days had almost fully recovered. Ian nodded at him. How have you been feeling? Okay, it's just the wound is a little itchy. As he spoke, the man's eyes fell on Madison. That's a good thing, Ian said. The itch means that the wound is healing. Ian was so serious, so focused on his work, that Madison couldn't help but smile in admiration. You're right, I have a feeling that I'm about to fully recover. The patient smiled and looked at Madison again. Dr. Weston, who might this be? He asked. The other people around them immediately perked up. They were all curious about the young woman. This is my wife, Ian said matter-of-factly. We're going to be holding our wedding celebration soon. It was as if a mine had exploded in the middle of a battlefield. Everyone's mouths dropped. All kinds of rumors had already been spreading about Dr. Ian Weston. People had said a while back that he had a girlfriend of two years to whom he was going to propose. It seemed like the rumors might have been true after all. Ian was actually married. His wife was right there in the hospital. It seemed like everyone was entranced. Is that so? The patient said, chuckling. Well, congratulations. He looked completely sincere. At that moment, everyone in their vicinity began to congratulate them. Of course, some people were still in a daze after his revelation and didn't react. Madison lowered her head and smiled shyly. She felt so grateful for all the support. Very soon, news got around that Ian's wife had come to the hospital. One of the shifts was ending, and there was a rush of incoming and outgoing staff. In the bathroom, the doctors and nurses who were done with work were chatting. Madison had stepped in to redo her makeup, and everyone was her for a doctor. She listened to their conversation as she washed her hands. One woman asked softly, Dr. Fultis, did you hear that Dr. Weston already has a wife? Do you still want to pursue him? A moment later, a bathroom stall door opened, and Dr. Faltas walked out. Madison looked up from washing her hands and peered at the doctor in the mirror. This was the person she had overheard the nurses talking about. The new doctor, Dr. Faltas. The person who had a crush on Ian. Dr. Faltas had changed into a tight, lacy dress that outlined her perfect figure. Her face was classily done up with natural makeup. She looked powerful and intimidating. Madison unconsciously shot a few more glances her way. She's so beautiful. How is Ian not attracted to her? If not her, then what kind of woman is Ian's type? Madison mumbled in her head. Dr. Fultis stood at the sink next to Madison and turned on the faucet. After washing her hands, she tidied her hair and checked her makeup. She spoke to the woman beside her. Dr. Lopez, do you really think that little of my abilities? She's only just married the man. I'm not concerned. Madison's face twisted up. Now that she had spoken and revealed how ugly she really was, she could see that Ian had standards, after all. It was a good thing that he wasn't into this arrogant woman. Dr. Lopez chuckled and looked at Dr. Faltas in the mirror. Do you really think you should keep pursuing him? She asked mockingly. You've been pestering Dr. Weston ever since you came here. No one can compete with your level of shamelessness. And now that he has a wife, you still want to step in? What will people think of you? Dr. Lopez questioned. Dr. Lopez said these last few words sarcastically, and Dr. Falta's face turned dark with anger. She hated being ridiculed. Let me remind you that you're no different. Don't you secretly love Dr. Weston? Isn't it a little hypocritical for you to pretend to be all high and mighty? Faltas countered. 
At that point, all three women's faces were contorted in annoyance. But Dr. Fultas and Dr. Lopez weren't aware of Madison's reaction. They were too busy fighting with each other. After Madison finished washing her hands, she walked out as if she hadn't heard a thing. Ian was making his final rounds. If there were no additional problems for him to attend to, he would be free to leave. Diana sat waiting for him in his office, leisurely drinking tea. Madison went in and sat down on the couch with a pout painted on her face. She was lost in her own thoughts. She felt inferior in comparison to Dr. Faltas or Dr. Lopez. Next to those two formidable women, she was just a rookie student about to graduate. Even though she had already secured a pretty good reputation in the design and advertising circles, she had managed to gain a bad reputation in her private life. Ian was about to turn 27 years old, and she was about to turn 23. We're four years apart, she thought. Does that mean there's a generational disconnect between us? She felt so young and inexperienced compared to the classy doctors in the bathroom. Madison got the sudden sinking feeling that she had been too impulsive in randomly finding someone to marry on the street. How did I get a good man like Ian? Do I deserve him? Am I even ready to be a wife? She wondered. Diana looked slyly at Madison's worried, desolate face and smiled. She had been right after all. She had gone to the hospital that day to sniff out who might have set eyes on her grandson. Diana had looked into most of the staff members, and there was not a single one who was worthy of him. In fact, most of them were even worse than Madison. She had wanted to see if any of them appeared bold enough to approach Ian, but it seems they weren't. However, she had really underestimated them. Ian still hadn't finished making his rounds. Someone knocked lightly on the door of his office. When no one answered, they came in anyway. Displeasure flashed across Diana's face, but the woman who came in didn't notice. It was Dr. Faltas. Isn't this Dr. Weston's office? She asked innocently. She scanned the room and saw that Ian wasn't there. She assumed that the people in his office were the family members of a patient who had come to ask Ian some questions. Are you here to speak to Dr. Weston? No one is allowed in his office when he isn't around. Dr. Faltus went on, speaking with authority. She recognized Madison, but didn't think for a second that such a young woman would be Ian's wife. She imagined that his wife would be sexy, enchanting, and mature. As she spoke, Dr. Faltus walked over to the couch. She looked at Diana and Madison as if she were running the place. Besides, I believe Dr. Weston is off duty. You can come back tomorrow, but I'm afraid you must leave now. Madison frowned. Forgetting for a moment that Diana was still in the room, she spoke her mind. You must be Dr. Faldas. I have a question. Say that no one is allowed in Dr. Weston's office when he isn't around. Why are you here? Although she was only 23, sometimes she could be fiery and open her mouth without thinking. Once she had finished speaking, Dr. Fultus stood there awkwardly, speechless. The woman you're with really has a bad temper, Dr. Fultus said, addressing Diana. Dr. Fultus had years of life experience. She knew exactly how to deal with a young woman like Madison. After calming down, she immediately said, You two came into this office unannounced when Dr. Weston wasn't around. You had stolen something from him. I couldn't let that happen, so I came in here to check on you. Dr. Faltus wasn't afraid of how they might respond to this accusation. They weren't her patients, so there was no action they could take against her. Madison suddenly laughed and looked at Dr. Faltus with a trace of playfulness in her eyes. Wow, you're really a bad liar, she said softly. Need I remind you that you knocked on the door. We hadn't even answered and you opened it and barged in. You didn't even know we were here. I'm honestly speechless. Also, I'm curious about something. I'm currently in my husband's office. What right do you have to tell me to leave? Even if you could force me to leave, you certainly couldn't force Dr. Weston's grandmother to leave. Diana smiled. Now that was more like it. A daughter-in-law of the Weston family must have courage. 
If nothing else, she must have courage. She suddenly felt delighted with Madison. She had never liked a soft, weak, or simpering woman. It was unhelpful. They always looked like they were suffering. But who was it helping? When Dr. Faltus heard Madison's words, her face turned white as a sheet, and her jaw dropped in disbelief. She couldn't believe that Ian would fall in love with a woman like Madison. Although she was very beautiful, she seemed quite mean. Wilson didn't care what Dr. Faltus thought of her. She leisurely picked up the mug of tea in front of her and took a sip. She turned to look at the doctor and added, Why are you looking for my husband anyway? In any case, I'm not sure how long he'll be doing his last rounds. Can't you drink a cup of tea and wait with us for a moment? Dr. Fultus was so angry that she was starting to see red. How dare this woman mock me, she wondered. She couldn't let her speak to her that way. But before she could reply, she looked behind Madison and immediately closed her mouth. She fixed her expression into a welcoming smile. Finally back, Diana cooed. Madison hadn't heard him come in, but she can infer that Ian had just opened the door. Her body tensed up when she thought of the word she had just used. Husband. It felt surreal. She had said it without thinking, as if she had been married forever. However, Madison cared more about what Ian would think of her if he found out that she made such a big fuss at his workplace. Will he be angry, she wondered. Little did she know that Ian had overheard the last bit of what Madison had said. He looked at Dr. Faltus as he entered, and then he walked across the office with a smile. He went over to his coat rack, which stood in the corner, and carefully removed and hung up his white doctor's coat. Then, he grabbed his car keys from his desk drawer, as if he was getting ready to leave. Dr. Weston? Dr. Fulta said timidly, but she didn't know what else to say. She looked at Ian dumbfoundedly. Ian walked over to the couch to sit beside Madison and put his arm around her shoulders. Dr. Fultus, is there anything I can help you with? He seemed familiar and comfortable with Madison. His actions were intimate and casual. If Dr. Fultus hadn't already known what was going on, this scene would have seriously confused her. With a pale face, she casually said a few words before turning around and leaving. Then, there were only three people left in the office. Madison still felt a little uncomfortable. But Ian held her hand and led her out behind Diana. He leaned over and whispered in Madison's ear, It seems my wife is a fighter. Her face instantly turned red and she looked up at Ian angrily. Ian merely smiled cheerfully back at her. Let's go. I'm taking you to dinner. This time, Madison didn't have the strength to argue. Diana decided not to join them. She only gave Madison a few soft words of advice before getting in a car and going home. Once again, Ian and Madison were alone. However, before they got to the restaurant, the Greenwalds called, asking Madison and Ian to return home. They said that they wanted to discuss Kelsey and Luke's engagement. Madison was silent for a few seconds before refusing and decisively turning off her phone. Ian had watched her without saying anything. From the moment he had spotted her in the hospital, he had known that Madison had something to tell him, something important. At the restaurant, they were seated by the window. Madison looked at Ian from across the table and took a few deep breaths. Finally, she gathered her courage and opened her mouth. Ian, is our marriage real or fake? I need you to give me an answer. I need to know what I should do. It seems that after only a few days, Madison was already wavering. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget subscribe. See you on the next episodes.